Welcome back to the Fast Life Podcast, which is brought to you by Simpson Motorcycle Helmets. Simpson has in stock ready to roll the Aurora Graphic Ghost Bandit. Check this model out with all the other models, finishes, and visor options at SimpsonMotorcycleHelmets.com and give them a follow at Simpson Motorcycle Helmets on Instagram. Lex and Moto is my undeniable headset of choice for my cross-country trips to my daily commute. I'm now running the FT4 Pro, which is the first in the industry to have a patented utility light with SOS function, Type-C USB charging, which is the fastest on the market, and up to 15 hours of battery life and up to 1.2 miles of intercom range. Head on over to LexandMotorcycle.com, see the many other products, and use Fast Life at checkout for 15% off. You can catch the Lexan team at Chicago and New York IMS shows coming up very soon. And as always, you can see them on Instagram at Lexan Moto. I have been running Thundermax ECMs on my EFI equipped bikes since 2012. And that's a fact, homie. <laughs> One of the best features is the ability to auto tune to your bike's upgrades and riding conditions. Do you want to install your own cam or big bore kit, but don't have access to a dyno? Then Thundermax is your go-to for reliable performance. Pair it up with the handlebar display and have all your engine's vitals in your field of view while you ride. Check out all their ECM applications and many other products to give your Harley Davidson some new life. Head on over to shoptmax.com and don't forget to follow Thundermax EFI on Instagram. Dream Rides is the spot if you're looking for a shop to build, maintain, repair, or upgrade your Harley Davidson, John Jessup is your guy. His shop in Stockton, California is a spot for in-house dyno tuning, parts, and bike sales. Check out their extensive online store at TeamDreamRides.com, which is offering 100 days same as cash financing on all products. All you need is a job and a bank account. And don't forget to use offer code FASTLIFE for 10% off and give John and the team a follow at DreamRidesJohn on Instagram. Paint Huffer Metal Flake is the industry standard when it comes to flake. Check out PaintHuffer.com and use FASTLIFE12 at checkout for 10% off. Follow Paint Huffer Metal Flake on Instagram and stay up to date on all the product releases and sales and the works of art produced by many artists from around the globe. And check out the Team Paint Huffer Custom Signature Series Flakes which will be launching, we will be launching the Fast Life Flake very soon. So give them a follow and stay woke, <laughs> I guess. All right, next one. Big Bear Performance is the go-to for high quality performance products for your FXR Dyna Softail and Performance Baggers. Along with being the industry leader in Olin suspension sales service and tuning, which is the shit, by the way, I love mine, would, if I could put Olin's on my bike for the rest of my life, I would definitely be doing that. But anyway, check out BigBearPerformance.com and you can always give Kevin a call and get the info and answers for your motorcycle's upgrades at 909-479-7788 and give him a follow on Instagram at BigBearChoppers. We're bad guys, man. Pretty excited, man. It's Monday. It's uh, the beginning of December, the last month of the year, which is uh, this year went by quick, man. It really did. Great year. Way better than last year. If you listen to this podcast since day one, man, I had a lot of setbacks last year, but this year has been great. You know, I've uh, really, I really dig it. This podcast has grown a lot. It's, it's gotten into more ears and, and we've had some really amazing guests and uh, this month is going to be a, a pretty good month. You know, I got quite a few things going on. If you follow us on Instagram, you're probably noticing that we're doing a lot of construction at the shop and we're trying to basically build a, a, a a studio similar to what like you would see on Joe Rogan's setup where we can do all the video stuff and it's 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 so close man you know but we're doing it it's happening next year is going to be a big like I wouldn't say change it's just going to be a lot of we're going to be doing a lot more content you know and um I'm, I'm be honest with you I've been working on some like videos for for YouTube and I say working I'm, I'm working on myself to get the courage to do it because it is very scary you know, like getting in front of a camera, talking, you know, like kudos to all you YouTubers out there that have the balls to do that because I'm having a hard time with it. But I think I'm going to get over it. I've been been working on it, trying to get more comfortable and it's going to happen. But we still got two podcasts left that we recorded at SEMA. And this one right here is with the two two radically badass artists, right? We have Steve Gibson from Air Oil and Lead and Franny 
which is Paint Zoo. Franny's known for doing a lot of, uh, you know, hockey masks, helmets, but he's a very well-rounded artist. And Steve is just like this guy that brought this whole new flavor of airbrush into our industry. You know, two guys that I, I think that are on different ends of the spectrum, but both just absolute amazing artists. And looking at this conversation we had in hindsight, there were so many things I wish I would have uh, been prepared to ask them, but I just, we, I, we didn't get around to it. But I think we had a great conversation and a um, lot, lot of art talk. So all you uh, custom painters out there are going to enjoy this. And um, I, I definitely did. And I actually listened back to it before I released it. And uh, these dudes are fucking awesome. So anyway, here we are. Steve, Franny, let's do it. Hey, guys. You ready to let the dogs out? Fast Life Podcast. Life. Same area. So pretty much I'm just getting hold of like... Yeah, just hold it like you're talking to your face. I mean, you're... Talking to my face. Yeah, talking to your face. There What's you go. What's up, face? So... Are we paint, on? Paint Zoo. Franny. What's up, Is that how you say it, Franny? Yep, Franny. And then the one and only Steve Gibson. Is that how you say it? Steve Gibson, air, oil, and lead. Fast, yes. fine, fast. So y'all are both in the same areas, right? <clears throat> yep. We are. Yep. New I'm, Jersey? You're right outside Philadelphia. I'm outside Philly. I'm yep. about an hour south of there. Yeah, about. A mm -hmm. little bit That's south cool. of Atlantic City, New Super Jersey. Close. So, Man, I'm planning on riding up there next year. I've never been no more north than uh, probably the Virginia borderline of North Carolina. So I'm looking forward to seeing all the... Yeah, for sure. Got to come up. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, it's not like Jersey Shore. I think people have a misconception oh, about do. Jersey. Yeah, <laughs> they actually, think, Jersey's nice. Jersey, yeah, it's the Garden State. It's yeah. actually very green. It's very pretty. Mm -hmm. It's not. There's there's small pockets that I just call like armpits they for are. sure. But that seems to define that entire state, and it couldn't be further from the truth. We had the same surf spots though. Same surf spots. I guess what's the sure. what the weird thing is, or what the different thing? Because being from Texas, like our shit's so spread out, like. You know, from Dallas to Houston is like a four, you know, three or four That's hour drive. And up there, like the, you're in a nut. I mean, other than traffic, if you're just smooth sailing, you're like halfway, you're four states over. You know what yeah. I mean? Well, the Northeast is kind of like we're what, five hours from Boston and two yeah, hours from Yeah. I always say we're, you know, like we're super close. To everything. everything is, you know, two and a half hours from New York City. Yeah. An hour from Philly, two and a half hours. It must from be good Washington, for business up there, though, too, though. Right. Because you can pull from so many areas. It is yeah. for sure. I That's agree. Cool. But I feel like, yeah, nowadays though, which is with social media and, uh, and the outreach, you, you're getting you're getting things from all over. Yeah, yeah, for sure. In the country, mm -hmm. wherever. I yeah. mean, mail just comes in. Right. Yeah, it's the best it's place made to work it easier for. Easier for a lot of us artists to have. I that, think so. It that, that opened window. the world. Yeah. Because when we first started, you think about it, we we had magazines. And that like, was it. And local people that. And word of mouth. Business. That was it. Yeah. You, know? I know you almost guy. were a slave to whatever shop if you're doing bikes. You were a slave to whether or not they had another project in line for you and stuff like that. Until, yeah, pretty you know, much. Now it's nice to be released from that. Yeah, so yeah. That way you don't have to be. Stuck it really in is that. like a lot of people. You know, like I think bike shops and car shops have a hard time nailing down a, a consistent painter because, yep. you know, we're all booked out for so long as it is, and then they have a job come in that they can knock out quick, but they, you know, we can't get to it quick. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Kind of throws a wrench in their mix sometimes. Yeah, it's nice to get away from it, like I said, because. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's certain shops that you you need that work. You know, yeah. so to get away from doing like you know certain shops, you're like you gotta. Now it's mail and internets and yeah, shipping yeah. Parts the source. In. Yeah, exactly. The, so the revenue better. sources. And, it's changed and a lot. Legs and and you know the, the other whole. thing that I think is good is that because of social media, like you can sell your pieces, like your art, like whatever it's a yeah, panel, your bypass the middleman. A lot of times with yeah. that shit now, you yeah. see that in the fine art world a lot too. Yeah. That's the big and question. And you've had is, a lot of experience. That. Yeah, I mean that's my background's more. It's kind of more from that angle. Yeah, yeah I, so mean, I was cu I was cutting my teeth. Um, a buddy of mine, Vic Grasso, is a super talented oil painter. I would call him what people you know a gallery artist or a yeah. fine artist for the most part. Um, we cut our teeth at a mural company outside of Atlantic City. I would say in the mid mid nineties, mm -hmm. um, and that was my background. I went and got a degree in in fine art from Flagler College in Florida, which. Mm -hmm. Call it for what it is. It's you know. I think there's a big misconception that an art education gives you some kind <laughs> sure. of step in the That's direction true. quicker yeah. than the next guy. Yeah. But I didn't learn shit about art there. Yeah, you didn't. No. no, but what it inspired me to learn though. I think what I learned was how to how to self educate uh -huh. and how to ask questions, which I think people don't know how to do. Yeah, yeah. You got to sure. know what questions to ask to know what you're going for. You have to know what your motives are. Um, so I think a lot of people look at a picture and they try to mimic a picture instead of asking themselves why am I, yeah. why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. They just 
Yeah, here's a skull, yeah. paint a skull, and they paint a skull, and yeah. they don't give it any more thought. Except yeah, you're that, breaking it down. and. Well, yeah, you know, you're trying to figure out what's important and what's not important. And mm-hmm. I feel like an education mm-hmm. kind of teaches you that when you get around... Yeah, you know when you get around academia a little bit, and you get around those those people are thinking. I see, you know. Agree. If you're an artist, look outside art. So, so when you took the, the so you went to the school and everything, like you feel like you just didn't learn as much that you. No, I had a bunch of painters. I read a great book years ago called Why Art Can't Be Taught, and basically the premise of the book was at that time in the late '90s that we were, we were in a second generation of artists who didn't know how to paint, trying to teach painting. That that that's like it in a nutshell. Yeah. You know, if you know a little bit of art history, it was like abstract expressionism came came to prominence mm-hmm. in the 1950s, and that was your Jackson Pollock's throwing yep. yeah. at a canvas that everybody goes, my five year old could do. Yeah. Um, and they basically threw out tradition from there, and the university started to, and it was uniquely American, and I think there was nothing culturally mm-hmm. accepted around the world that was uniquely American. So there was this big embracing of that. I think jazz was another mm-hmm. one at the time. They always say it's like jazz, American yep. Pie, and baseball. I had commercial art. That's what I was doing. So you're you're. I learned a lot off of just being around him. Uh-huh. Like, like we got to work with the brush masters. Yeah, you know. <clears throat> really kind of picking off of each mm-hmm. other because I'm probably like you, Jace. Like we're traditional, like you know erasers and different things. And then you look at what he's doing yeah, with yeah. this industry, and you see well, like. What that I, fine art and what he's bringing to the table and a lot of us yeah. me and Christian sit around you know Vano and, and we're sitting around and we're going wow man like he's bringing something that hasn't been done yeah and, uh, and you know refreshing. it was I, I've said many times through this podcast man there was like this weird uh, growth in, in, in the techniques and the, <clears throat> and the actual outcome of the work uh, right around the 08 when, st- when uh, Corey St. Clair started applying his stuff I mean Drew Blair has always been killing it but as far as like the automotive and the and the custom paint side of things, yep. you know, he kind of brought it through, and then it just kind of inspired people to start looking at skulls differently and looking at images differently to put them on there. And then you came on the scene, and you you know you had that look, but then like the the way you went about doing the paintings, it was just a completely different style. Yeah. It's hard to pick apart. Like it's hard to look at yep. and go like, okay, I see he started here and worked up. Like what? Yeah, uh, it's like looking at a and fucking. And I, f- I follow Stephen work for a, a while yeah. through. Yeah, I've been familiar internet. with you for a lot. Yeah, for a you long know, time. Through, but I was real quiet action. for a long time. But you too. were in the airbrush actions, and it was like you were putting it out there, and it was. My, yeah, my first, first article with him was yeah, 2013. Yeah, so it was like six years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I've also seen you in like also you know how they feature in the beginning. Yeah. And you'd see like oh who's oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. who's yeah, a that, Stephen they had Gibson that cat? Yeah, the readers gallery. So what what was the what was the transition? for you to like get into this like after you got out of school what kind of art did you pursue so I was doing mural you know I, I got into the mural thing and again you know everybody's a little bit lost mm-hmm. kind of I would say in their early 20s especially if you're an artist and you're creative you, you're kind of going what should I do you have an idea of what you should do you're listening mm-hmm. to everybody around you going oh you got talent you should do this you should do that um, and I think I listened to the people around me more than I listened to myself yeah. in my 20s um which I think was actually beneficial in the long run because it exposed me to so many different angles and so many different people and so many different like you know creative avenues. I think um, also we only had certain things to look. Well, at. well, that was it. There was no you know there was no there was no we, internet. We had no internet, yeah. so <laughs> you know, it was like you, you grab know. a magazine. But I was fortunate that I feel like the 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 best thing I ever did was put myself around the right people. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was at that mural company, it was a time when vinyl billboards were coming into place, so there were all these billboard artists that were out of work that had been painting traditionally for 40 years. Damn. Um, and it was really like, you know, sit down and shut up and, yeah. and, and just yeah. watch. So I had these guys that were just so giving of their, their knowledge and know-how and information. Um, and I've always been a good student, I feel like. I, I just sat and I watched off and on for years. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was none of it was airbrushed, but yeah. the airbrush, always it always called me. Like, that called me stronger than than a paintbrush and it took me years to really understand what was going on in my own psyche mm-hmm. because my friends were traditional they frowned on the airbrush it was it was a cheat yeah. it was you know it was a simple way out it wasn't learning how to to use your tools use your brushes uh-huh. and, and master them yeah but I'm competitive so it was kind of like can I curse yeah yeah, yeah it was kind of like fuck you you know <laughs> yeah. I can I can hang with you guys too <clears throat> and I always kept the airbrush kind of on the back burner because I enjoyed doing it yeah it just didn't it didn't get the same respect still doesn't get the same yeah. respect nope. um, you can't go into a gallery and say I'm an airbrusher they laugh yeah, at you it yeah. doesn't matter what the quality of your work is 
Um, that's always been a thing too, and that's same. why that's why a lot of us get forced into the, you know, into the custom culture area because that's the only place that really gets shined and gets respected. But I, I think that's that, the problem totally. with it. Yeah. I think that's the problem with it is you sit there and you see a whole bunch of people who are really good airbrush artists bitching that they're not getting credibility elsewhere. Yeah. And I go, you don't deserve it. Nope. Yeah. You know, sorry, like no offense, but yeah, you're good there. But I'm, 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 you know, my influences are oil painters. And man, you put one next to the other one, they don't deserve the same credit because really the the knowledge and the know-how behind that guy painting with mm-hmm. a brush in his hand, there's there's 1,500 years of knowledge right here. Not going back to, yeah. I would say, yep. 1,200 uh, pre-Renaissance. like. That's what eight hundred years yeah. of information. How yeah. the airbrush been around a hundred years and everything else. Yeah. When I when I finally started like picking up an air, I'd been doing custom paint for a while, but just graphics and striping and shit. But what were your influences? Well, it was that exactly. But once I got into it, once the airbrush, you know, after doing drop shadows for a couple of years, the muscle memory started kind of making it so I felt like I could draw with it. Sure. Which was still not really the best way to get into the realism that you know we all kind of achieve now. Sure. Mm-hmm. But. Then once I started airbrushed and then I started falling in love with, you know, like my favorite painter has always been Alex Gray. He's one of my favorite sure, man. In, uh, influences sure. and stuff. And you start looking at all these different people and then I'm like, fuck, man, like that's when I realized that airbrush didn't have the credibility of of traditional oil painting and all these other gallery artists and sure. stuff like that. So I started trying to figure out a way. I started practicing with brushes. But at the time, you know, what was the most popular shit. Day of the Dead Chicks. Yeah. <laughs> so you're true. just doing all this shit. Yep. It's like. It looks cool. I mean, I sold them. You know, I made some money on the shit, but it wasn't like nothing that I have a picture of now that's even on my Instagram. It right, was never yeah. my artwork. But it wasn't feeding your soul. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, that resonates with your customer and your client. Yeah. It like, does. You're, I didn't. <clears throat> you're following a trend. Well, that's you're it. You're following and, what's yeah. popular and what's, Paint you know. true fire and skulls and <clears throat> yeah. shit to the tits. Like, it's going to sell until we're dead. I was know? inspired yeah. by, like, guys like Sonny De Palma. Mm-hmm. And um, you know uh, Chris Cruz, mm-hmm. guys that were airbrush guys, mm-hmm. you know, and and it's amazing people don't even know that they're around anymore because they don't have social media, in, yeah, you know, yeah. but they are they're mm-hmm. killing it in the game. But you know, Sonny unfortunately is not here no more, mm-hmm. but um, he still influenced me, yeah, you know, Rat Finks and just the way he laid out stuff, you know. But I, I look at guys like. <clears throat> you were a traditional uh, fine art guy. I, I looked, I I had commercial art background, so it was a little different. So I, I looked well, you were at looking guys, at illustrators. You were absolutely, at the I, I, I was looking at like Drew Struzans yeah. and the, those guys with like layouts and how they did things, mm-hmm. and you know, taking like if they were doing Star Wars, for instance, like yeah. he would do just the silhouette of Darth Vader and put everything inside of it, and you're like. Well, yeah, he does have Darth that Vader. Pop culture kind yeah, of he had Darth yeah, Vader there, man. but he didn't have to paint him. He painted yeah. everything inside of it. And, and you're like, it still told a sort of story. It, it more did. Or less. Well, that's yeah. A, yeah, and it was thought out. It's it, thought it's out. It's thought yeah. out. You know, I think too often yeah. if I see another fucking Morgan Freeman oh, yeah. painted, I got it. It's gonna, you know, everybody's are, painting the fucking Joker. It's like, it, come on, people. Yeah, it's like I feel like the, some of those things are good for like the for the learning experience of trying to get the uh, the, the, the technique. I get that, but I feel like. It just goes from one to the next. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, if it's it's the Joker today, it's going to be something, you know. Yeah, whatever next Marvel thing. Whatever next thing. Marvel yeah. thing that they decide to redo, yep. and whoever the next Joker is going to be, it's going to be the next popular thing a year from now. And it's feeding this machine of, it's got no soul. Yeah. It's great for technical abilities. You're going to get a thousand likes. Good for fucking you. Yeah. Yep. But you're still eating Taco Bell. Yep. Yeah. You know? I like, agree. <laughs> You know, yep. there's just, yeah, I need more, I mean, and again, that's just me. I need more than that. So, you know that you know? one bike you did with uh, Kyle, the they had all the, like, the Death Dealer and all the, the or I don't know if it had yeah, the yeah, Death no, Dealer, no, but it had the. Yeah, yeah, piece that we did. It was just was the, it that, it was a gas tank, right? Oh, no, no, that, that one was the, though, but I'm talking about the bagger yeah. that you did all the Viking art on it. Yeah, 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 That yeah, shit was sure. fucking crazy, and this, the the perspectives on there. So, like, how'd you go, up, like, like. Laying that shit out, you look at the time, it kind of fed itself a little bit with the subject matter. Yeah. Um, and it's just conversation with, with Kyle, you know? Like, let's do this. It's the, They wanted that Viking Norse kind yeah. of mentality, which is not my thing, really, but you figure it out. And, you know, I like the challenges of trying to figure out where to put, you know, your style, your, uh-huh. your approach into it. Like, I'm a process person. Yeah. I think that's where my style comes from. It's, you know... I like almost to a detriment of what I was doing for a while because I didn't care about the end product. I mm-hmm. cared about the journey in it, and I wanted to see how things were made. Like a uh, contemporary artist, a guy named Chuck Close, who's primarily known as a photorealist, 
Like, look him up. He was doing these photorealist paintings in the late 60s that looked like photographs. Mm -hmm. His background was totally abstract until he saw that he sucked at it and he went the other way. But he was a Yale-educated artist. I feel like it's kind of hard to suck at abstract. You know what I mean? No, <laughs> it's so fucking hard. <laughs> you have to, I, I would, no, uh, like, you have I to think, study it. You I feel look like it's, uh, it's all about confidence. It's about how you do it and then Absolutely walk away from not. the painting. No, man. It's like you look at some <laughs> I'm, of these I'm, successful I'm abstract like, artists yeah. and you look at what their early careers were. Yeah. They could paint circles around any realist painting today. For it's real. crazy. It's, you know, when you look at Picasso's early work at the age of 10 and 12, he could paint you almost photorealistic from life sitting in front of you. Well, see, I thought when, that that's what was, uh, I thought that that was what most people were learning was photorealism until the camera came along and put them out of business. A little bit. And along then those it lines, became a sure. new form of art. It absolutely right. did. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. I mean, those guys were yep. out of a job, so to speak. Yeah. You know, um, but like Picasso's, I, you know, Picasso's dad, I think, was a department head at a university oh, of, wow. the, of the art. He grew up in it. He, mm -hmm. you know, I think. And, but but he was competitive. Like yeah, there's a quote. So his mom said something like, "If Picasso wanted to be the Pope, he would have been the, the best See, Pope ever." I kind of I kind of in artist. Dallas. That's cool. I grew up with a not grew up, but we grew up painting. You know, in the same shops together sure, at times. Sure. Uh, this dude named Sergio Garcia. And he started off in airbrush and graffiti, mm -hmm. and then he got into sculptures, and now he does like these fucking things where it's like two hands out of a wall, and one's like rolling up weed, one's like pouring, you know, some, you know, like like kind of a pop culture kind of thing, but sure. it's just hands out of a wall, and they're all different, they're all doing different That's things, cool. and. You know, he's got one in Seth Rogen's house. I'm like, I'm so proud of this dude just because he was always on the hustle for in the art scene. Sure. Like, like making shit, doing stuff, using yeah. airbrush, using like multimedia type processes to make something. Yeah. It was yeah. cool. And, he, and he's got like, he started doing these little uh, tricycles, but he would do the thing where it's like just round bar and then the wheels are over here and, and then he had them sitting in like the France airport or some shit like crazy stuff it's rad like yeah. that's rad success yeah. right there <laughs> that is good you know and I'm just I, I never would have saw that you know where he was at and because I kind of dabbled in the in the fine art scene with him at the sure. time but like I said I didn't maybe I was too hard on myself I didn't know what I was I felt like I was still influenced by all the other sure. Corey St. Clair's and fucking Drew Blair's and Rod Fuchs and all these other people mm -hmm. that yeah, I looked up in work sure. mm -hmm. but I'm trying to do fine art with custom paint and I just didn't mm -hmm. find it now I see like there's galleries here with grind metal candy paintings everywhere I'm like fuck I yeah, was like doing Dennis that shit Madison 10 years ago that, yeah and uh, Gerald <laughs> Mendez Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they Mendes, do all that kind of yeah. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That little miracle mom. All there's a whole Dennis fucking Matthews, uh, like galleries. Yeah. yeah, a ton of it. Um, yeah, he's yeah. from what I understand. He's whole, the number one selling artist in the Hawaiian Islands. Wow, so, yeah, I mean, it makes it, sense. Yeah, it does. Um, I mean, it's beautiful, but it's got mass appeal. It's commercial yeah. appeal, but it's great. I mean, he's living the dream. You see him yeah. out there snorkeling and taking yeah. photographs for subject I've seen matter. Him here. Oh yeah, I'm he's a walking big, around I'm right now. I'm a big fan. I not be. He's there right here painting bikes, yep. man. Yep, yep. yep his career, it's nice to see these guys' careers and where they go. And what's well, is good to find out, like what when they when they branch off and it from stemming from this art thing, and they find a very sustainable career, then it's inspiring for us because I, I can't paint bikes until I'm seventy three. No, there's no end mean? game there. We <laughs> yeah. talked about that a lot. Yeah, you know, there's got to be out. But I think part of that, like, it's you got to listen to it. And you can't be, you can't force it. You have to kind of have faith that you're you're asking the right questions and looking outside mm -hmm. your, you know, yeah. your own scene, so to speak. Yep. Um, like I know for me, like and it, like I wound up here kind of organically by just letting go a lot. Like mm -hmm. I knew that murals were burnt. I was burnt out on murals by the time I hit thirty. Mm -hmm. I had tried to sit down graphic design work for an ad firm in front of a computer. Um, it just was not my gig for yeah. sure. Um, and then I was just, I was, I was over it. I was over all of it. And I kind of said, you know what? I went for a sign shop for years mm -hmm. where that's where <laughs> I actually learned how to, you know, production paint, so yeah. to speak, yep. um, because it was, you know, a lot of metal cans and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So it's yep. the same process, just not on a car. Um, you did automotive, right? It was yeah. all automotive. That's where I was introduced to House of Color, yeah. early yeah. 2000s. And you um, painted. Yeah. So it's like and you, was, you yeah. pretty much know the whole. I burnt, yeah. yeah, I burnt out, and then I went and got a job at a body shop. Yep. I said, you know what, I'm just going to go here. I'm mm -hmm. just because it's not brainless, but it's a lot less, you know, a yeah. lot less brain. Yeah, yeah it, it took a lot less than. I feel like it's easier to get into the bodywork thing in your like mid twenties. 
and start doing it and appreciate it for the hard work. But if you're doing it as like a 16, 17, 18 year old. See, I was about 30 when I got into it. Mindless and yep. you're just like, I yep. got to get somewhere else in life. Yep. Not knowing that, you know, that shit will pay your bills. It will. Oh, it will. And it's <laughs> good, dude. There's nothing wrong with hard work. I feel yeah. like there's a whole generation of CEOs out there who don't know that that job's yeah. not there for and it's yeah. got It's got to be done. Yeah. It does. Someone's got to do it. But So you kind of progressively. Well, I went, in, I went into door. that and I, I put everything down. I just, I was like, you know what? I had just got married at the time. I wanted to have kids, and I knew that my, my window was getting smaller and smaller about what I wanted to do. I knew that I loved art. I knew that murals weren't the answer. Then I was doing portrait painting. You know, you were just going through the gamut of fine art stuff that yeah. really doesn't have long-term legs. I wanted to be like a gallery artist. I, you know, I'd had some friends who were, who were having some success, but I didn't have a body of work. I didn't have that sense of vision because it wasn't important to me. Like I didn't yeah. give a fuck what people thought about what I saw, mm-hmm. but I loved the process. Like, mm-hmm. so yeah. what do you do with that? It doesn't pay the bills to love making shit mm-hmm. when you don't care what the end result is. It just, it doesn't make sense. So I just, I bought myself the time. Yeah. I went and learned to trade and you know, mudding up pieces, Sit. you know, piecework, fenders, full dips, you know. I think everything in sanded. life is like a stepping stone. It is. You know, you, but it now felt look right. at what you did. Yeah, you now, know, but now it felt you right. Came to the yeah. Fluition here, like, you know what I mean? Like, I think in every artist does the same thing. But I think this we'll is the answer steps. to that. Yeah, this I is painted the t shirts for the longest yeah, time. Yeah, I'm like, for oh, sure. how many Harry Loves Susie freaking t shirts can I do? <laughs> you know, and is it going to pay your bills and surfboards and like. All that shit. Yeah. I, I kind of wish I would have grew up in the. Um, in the t-shirt side of it because those guys always had so much control yeah. of their of their line work and they're just yeah, strokes. I got a t-shirt shop. I don't even know how to paint t-shirts. Right yeah. Like, <laughs> he's trying to get me to paint over uh, there. Yeah, I know. I brought you down. He's, sure. like, he's like, come yeah, on Jen out. I, and I opened up that t-shirt shop last yeah, year on, on a seashore boardwalk mm-hmm. and that was her, her background. She's so, phenomenal. Dude, she's a machine with it but yeah. it's like cashing in on that tourist dollar for 10 weeks I did. I did it yeah. for so long at Ron John's and down the shore. That's where we talked about member yeah, for, for a long sure. time and, and she's, yeah. she's so good at it. Like yeah, she, for sure. That's her thing. I, like, I just feel like you could always tell those type of uh, artists when they're in, like here who kind of grew up in that background and then came yeah, to the custom pay thing. You can yeah. see it in their work. Yeah, for yep. sure. You know, and but it's neat though. I mean, yeah, I it's think a different style. It is, you know, and it's a story and it's yeah. a history. Yeah. It's kind of strange how like we all started trying to achieve a realism look after the 2010 and like Drew mm-hmm. Blair was already around, but he started getting like big commercial success of yep. not, you know, seeing it. And I think we all started chasing that. And then some, you know, a lot of people started hitting that. And then like, okay, well now what? You know, like how do we turn this into something else? Because now all of us are having the same. Well, to me, that's not profitable. The way Drew Blair does it is not profitable. Mm. And I'll say that plain and simple. I mean, people might call me out on that, but it's not, this is my understanding is his technique was pre-Photoshop days. It was meant to be photographed and Mm -hmm. it was meant to be Photoshop before Photoshop. You know, mm-hmm. to me, it was it's it's repurposed. It's mind blowing work. Yeah, oh, it's beautiful. Um, you got to give them that. I mean, yeah. it's beautiful. You know, I think it's my I, I think it's mind blowing on print. Like to me in person, it to me it it lacks a little yeah. bit. It lacks a soul. It lacks. Um, I don't want my shit to look like the guy next to me. Yeah, and I yeah. think that the techniques, as far as economy and 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 you know quickness, are dated. Yeah, yeah. And nobody wants their fucking metal scratched with a fucking exacto knife. It, like plain and simple just the functionality of it um if you're gonna do details like that yeah here, be prepared to do the entire thing mm-hmm. yeah because i see that end, a lot make it good i see it a lot in artists they they'll they'll try to do the face like this and they'll try to do the hair with the with and the then, razor blade and then they give up mm-hmm. and then it's like okay it looks like mm-hmm. you need to finish this <laughs> keep going and that's yeah. what like i think drew what he's doing is he's i'm he's not scraping it but no what but he's doing he's scra- but it's illustration board it's illustration he's board. scraping it's it and then he's going back over it and layering it and layering it and yeah, layering yeah. it and it gives you know dimension that's well the way you the way i see it, it really yeah you know, yeah but on metal yeah but yeah. there's so many techniques out now that people are doing whether it's a racer like I, I was doing a racer hard for a while yeah and then i just got away from it yeah know? i did too because once again we were talking about the other day like you, you just it kind of becomes like you want to hit a couple highlights with an eraser, but then next thing you know, like those Dude, things stand out so much. It's not married. There's yeah. No, there's no marriage to it. There's yeah. no cohesion mm-hmm. to it. So it's like we all went down these paths of like, oh, this is a new trick or a new yep. way of doing it, but then we're resorting back to. But see, I was staying. looking at oil painters the yeah. whole time. Yep. Like I wasn't looking at airbrushing at all. I yeah. never looked at airbrushing. I didn't. I'm really interested to like, know. if I get a chance to take your class to kind of learn the color theory of using the oil painting stuff, because that's Dude, what you've it's, been. It's a grisaille method, which dates back to 1200. 
Mm-hmm. A guy named Titian probably popularized it a little bit before. What what people don't understand about what I'm doing is it's so much older than what y'all are yeah. we're accustomed mm-hmm. to. My shit's out there. It's not new. It's just repurposed. Mm. So I'm taking that, and then you glaze your color in. You mm-hmm. basically push back your darks and your midtone darks with color, and you keep reestablishing your midtone lights and highlights. Yeah. And you do that repeatedly. You can do it 30 times. You can do it three times. Mm-hmm. Until um, you get it right, basically. Well, basically, it gives you so many outs. <clears throat> like, it looks, it, it looks, it's got a finished quality once you get past, you know, a certain element yep. all mm-hmm. the way through. I, I say, like, I don't have to sacrifice my quality or my integrity as an artist with my approach at the $500 mark. I know what my out is. I know I got X amount of time to paint that. Mm -hmm. And people think they can't afford me. I go, well, what do you got to spend, man? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I can work that. My, you know, it's, it's like, my shit's fine tuned to it's fit amazing that technique. There's, I watched them. Yeah. And but it's we, got economy to it, you it know? Does. It's based in history, yep. but you can make money doing it, yep. you know? Yep. Hey, that's one thing. Was the Why theory, take it away when you can add it in? That's theory. what I say about the original. Because yeah. if you think yeah. about us, like us traditional guys, that are, we're looking at it and we're like, ooh, we're, we're working light to dark and then we're trying to erase and get highlights in yeah. there as we're going. Where with him, I've watched him and we've talked hours about his techniques and different things. And that's what's amazing is he's taking old history but, and bringing it to yeah, what, yeah. But what we do. But think about why that shit was done before. But you think about like they only had so the no-no well, not only was that. to bring white into back in because then it starts looking fuzzy. You know, like when you know, we were I'm making real airbrush. slow value adjustments, yep. but I'm making them quick. That's why I'm I'm painting exactly. nine grays. I'm painting opaque. I'm not re- I'm not yeah. relying yep. on the transparency. Yep. Shit. That's what I mean about bringing yeah. like us. We were like, oh, if we bring white back into this, we're gonna we're, we're gonna, gonna blue start, shift. Yeah, and we're gonna, gonna have lose, to deal with and this. We're start and muddying it up. Yeah. It's gonna yeah. look fuzzy. And where he's he's I'm doing details of 50 psi, and I'm, I'm trying to mimic yep. a traditional paint. Yeah, you can tell the strokes in in the thing, but also it's like a. You know, I started kind of watching you, I think, on Monday at the thing, and I just you were just, you know, kind it's of really freehanded, yeah, and, man. you know, bringing it out. Yeah. But the other thing that I, that I was really blown away is because a lot of the images that you've used over the last couple of years since I've been doing my helmet style mm-hmm. is like, man, I had a customer that really wanted that image, but I shot away from it because I couldn't find enough detail in it to to make the image pop. Right. And yeah, then, yeah, bam, we you do it, the it's day. like fucking like, oh, fuck, man. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like I need to use that image that you created to get the details I needed to do that. So I'll then. send you a high-res picture if you ever get in that position again. <laughs> right. No, but that's knowing what's important and what's not. Yeah. And I think that, that becomes the art question. And I think that goes back yeah. to yeah. the college education thing was, like, I didn't learn how to do that in college, but what I did learn how to do is ask questions. Mm. You know, how many str- I say yeah, an educated you know an educated art marks ten times more important yeah. to know what that is versus like I can say fifty strokes of hair with three marks versus taking a knife and scraping out fifty yeah. s- strands of hair mm-hmm. like it, it, you know in its most primitive sense art is communication it, mm-hmm. it predates written language yeah mm-hmm. so how can I say this in the most efficiently and economical way you know how to, can I describe pupil. Yeah, I don't need to sit there and you, you hear painted to death, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. When you look at some of these great masters, your Rembrandts and your Vermeer, let's just say Rembrandt for example. Yeah. You look at his early career, you know, and that's Baroque, which is probably the early to mid 1600s. Mm-hmm. It's it's pretty fine tuned artwork. I mean, he is a master of his craft at that age. As you look and you go, you look along the career of these people, their brush marks get looser. You know, they understand what they're saying in a, in a quicker, more efficient way. It's yeah. not because they got lazy; it's because they understood their craft better. Yeah. Yep. And you see that trend across the greats yeah, in history. Do. They all follow really that does. same trend. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of like, oh, I can say this like this, mm-hmm. versus you know, it's instead of ten strokes, it became two mm. because they just get it, and that's kind of what I'm trying to do with what I'm doing. But I, but I can't get away from that realism. I love that painterly look, mm-hmm. but I still love. I, I still want to hold on to that kind of photographic yeah. kind of realism yep. too. So do my clients. Yeah. So my, you know, my my fun is to kind of try to find that middle gray, that middle yeah. area, yep. so to speak. Um, yeah, because we've talked about that all the time. Just, you know, he, he, we're starting with a white canvas. He's starting with a gray canvas. And I'm working yeah. my way out. I, mean, so I have absolute control. Absolute. Uh, over and, my and values. That's one thing and that I, I Jason, I, I yeah. swear to God, I'm sitting there at Brushmaster, and I'm like what the freak like I'm I'm taking his cuss. class you, you know and me and Christian we're, <laughs> Christian we're like how are you getting that there that fast you know yeah. but it's quick but it's, it's quick so and when you watch you're like wow his values See, are so fast that was the thing that I was talking about uh, with another guy about like the class thing right because and I'm not saying anything bad about any of the classes out mm-hmm. there, but I've had a, like, when I came 
to uh, San Antonio and you were there, mm-hmm. I wanted to sit in and, and kind of watch some of the stuff. But then, oh, Corey, what's up, brother? Hey, Ryan. Like, and then they say, you know, we're just talking about oh, it. Yeah, life. you get called up saying hi to everybody, too. Yeah, those, and those you're like, things are hard, man. and it's hard to, like, yeah. okay, I'm here for a reason. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't imagine being an instructor where you're like, you seem to do a good job because, does. you know, you're in it. But, like, when I was over there fucking with Ryan, I mean, me being there took them off of. You know, doing their job. Yeah, I'm all fucking business. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, and that's it, man. I show Mm -hmm. up. I have an agenda. You know, there's that was was nice working with you there. Yeah, I'm. You know, just I'm real folk. I'm like laser focused on you know, and then just trying to pick out. All right, like when we're sitting here teaching these classes, what do we need to? Yeah, because we're all different artists. All all three Mm -hmm. of us. Yeah, and everybody brings something valuable to the table. Right, but what do we need to do to all be on the same page? Mm -hmm. And that was was the biggest thing. Is I think finding different different like watching your class or being in it and learning some techniques. It kind of becomes tools in the toolbox, and then you that's, can kind of that's create your exactly own thing it right there. And yeah. That's what I tell people: that what you're sitting in, you're going to get something from, or everything from, or nothing from. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's as important mm-hmm. to know what's what's not working for you as as what is. But like that's what I I mean when I'm teaching with Jen. That's that's kind of like we have an agenda with our class, and people are coming for specific reasons, but everybody does have their own thing, you know. And yeah. part of my job as an instructor too is to go like. That's not how I do it, but man, you are really good at that. Yeah. Don't fucking change that. Yeah. There's something rad right there. Yep. So don't do it my way. And sometimes, yeah. yeah, I'll say that to somebody like, yo, don't do not do what I'm doing here because that's going to fuck you up. Yeah. And you this might got... work better for you. Like mm-hmm. I've been teaching in an art center my way, like traditional yeah. oil painting and drawing for 12 years now. Um, it's just been a part-time gig, but it, I mean, it feeds me too. Yeah. It's kind of like a, you know, pay it forward yeah. kind of thing too. But a lot of times, you know, I'll, you know, traditional pencil techniques and mm-hmm. yeah. and this and that but every now and then you'll get somebody who's got this wacky little wonky style they might not know all of like let's just call it like academic ideas yeah. but I'm going man you're going to screw yourself up if you if you go down that avenue yeah. mm-hmm. part of my job is to make sure I, and I feel like that's the difference between being an instructor and being a teacher yep. yeah. you know my, my job is to see the world through your eyes and guide you proper mm-hmm. not guide you my way but to guide you proper yeah. you know if my way works for you that's fantastic I know it works for me mm-hmm. let's see if it works for you or let's see if there's something I do that might be able to help you, help you your- yeah help you on your own journey I mean my mm-hmm. journey is going to be different from your and that's yeah. the beauty of all this is to sit in this well, environment see, and talk about that's it. That's what I think is like how we are going to get the next generation of artists that might even mind blow all of us is when I hope so, it's some right? guy or girl that's coming through your class and then they take another class and next thing you know they have all these influences from fuck, yeah, this right. and they're like where the fuck did you come up with that? Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yep. So, you know, that's yep. what you want to well, see. I think that's what's happening. I mean, yeah. if you look at the progression of the airbrush world over the last 20 years, I mean, fuck, dude, like, Look we're, at the tattoo world. Though. Yeah, tattoo no, world. same thing, man. Yeah. Jesus it's like everybody, Christ, but the there's got to be marks, you know. Everybody's yeah. got to just try something out of the box yeah. constantly. And him coming into it, See, I've been I doing it 26 like, years. Yeah, and I'm inspired every day. Yeah, for you know, sure. Seeing what he does. <laughs> that, like I said, that Frazetta does. tank was dope. The yeah, color, that I the, the whole right there. Yeah, yeah, that whole color choice and, and, giveaway, and the right? yeah, that was that giveaway for Chop Call. Yeah, mm-hmm. but but I think that's another thing too. It's it's that collaboration with people, and yeah. you, you you guys all understand that too. It's when you get like I know Kyle and I's relationship. We know going in that we're going to butt heads right out of the gate. Yeah, and that's part of the marriage of of our styles and our, our own unique sense of vision for a project. Um, and we come out with a product that we know is going to be so much better than if either yep. of us went at it alone. Yeah, true. We both get something out of it. We both fight for what we believe well, in, mm-hmm. and we both learn from I each other. I think you're both like really proficient at being very professional at your work. Like When you see Kyle's graphics, it's crisp, it's on point, yep. it's, it's quality. And then when you add your artwork into it, it's it's a perfect marriage of like a really mm-hmm. fight tight work. You yeah. know what I mean? But it's the, but it you know it's not super smooth and it's yeah. never super smooth and we know it going like it's never been a fight yeah but it's always been a little bit of no 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 what about this no I think this yeah. you know yeah. and then you just you kind of whittle along and then you wind up at this the thing and you're going is, like yeah this is this yeah. this is where we should the yeah. next one will be better we already yeah. know that going in but yeah. we're running with this now that's great um, and that's you know and that's like check your ego at the door kind of shit yeah yep, which people need to fucking do <laughs> yeah yeah for sure yeah like you know <laughs> just go into everything knowing you're gonna learn something new that's yeah. the way you yeah. gotta be I agree totally shit, you know? 100, 110% and if you're the that. biggest fish in that room get the fuck out of the room and find another one like yeah. you know the the company I keep down in my, my area the fine art company I keep dude they I fucking suck 
Yeah. Yeah. And I, it's like, I'm trying to do what they're doing with an airbrush. I'll never get to that level. That's a driving force. I keep, yeah. you know, the stupid Irish in me is going like, I'm going to get there someday. Yep. But you and still do, you it. still traditionally do painting, I didn't pick right? up a paintbrush too. Only when I'm teaching, really. Oh, okay. But I don't find the time for it. And I really am so into what I'm doing right now. I'm just, I'm running with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love it that much. Like mm-hmm. when That's I'm, cool. when I'm, you know, when I get downtime, I'm painting. Yep. But I'm painting with my shit. Yeah. You know, I'm not learning your techniques and how oh, to yeah teach. i'm reading something yeah. i'm trying to be more efficient like i fucking dig what i do like, yeah we you know, have fun talking about it. this of just like picking each other's brains and finding out where you really want to go in the industry yeah. and like you just want to do the art it's really what it's about man I, you know i i agree trying to find that time too it's important oh yeah because yeah, a lot of us you know we, we we're got all on kids the same and page life yeah and, you and know, it's busy and, yeah. and you go oh, i'm too tired and i go don't go to fucking we were gonna go surfing 50 times this year and never did one <laughs> we time. did that like last year too man. <laughs> right Come on down. so it's like find you know, an afternoon sure yeah. that'll happen never man, i live right next to you i got out three times that <laughs> exactly summer, i think you know and, and of course correct me at, at any time but i feel like for me whenever I started making good money doing this stuff and at kind of at a point where I don't see how I could charge more for this in just this industry. I kind of found myself at a cap and I and I lost some motivation to do I haven't done color airbrush portrait work 10 years and and I pick up the airbrush once or twice a month and do what I do. Right. It's just it never became my soul like I, it was a tool that I had and I used and then every once in a while I gotta like hit you up for a refreshment on how do I you know kind of evolve right, right. Mm-hmm. and I've been lucky to get help from the guys like you and, and Ryan and things like that mm-hmm. but I just man I lost a little bit of an interest in it because I didn't know where else to take it like I'm a goal guy mm-hmm. like sure. what's the next step where to go where, what's to try to achieve I think that's what's nice though about having friends in the industry that yeah. would actually well, sure. show you oh, back yeah. then yeah. back yeah. when I was painting and airbrushing when I was younger man we couldn't no, no, one, would, no one would even and that was the old people you. with like secret oh yeah, yeah all their like, secrets oh, you can't yeah, see you this can, you see can't, that but that's what's nice shit. though like if you like do that, get that point that was old airbrush action videos you'd watch me like alright I'd watch the whole <laughs> video but nothing's working the way they said it would there's one trick missing that puts the, it's the keystone in this fucking arch that's the edited version of yeah, I was gonna yeah. say, yeah, yeah, they went left yeah. and they're telling you to go right yeah. a little same, bit. Same with Wait even the, the articles. Yeah. The articles. I'd watch Stephen Driscoll's and You gotta get the deluxe huge. version for that keystone. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, you'd be like, Oh, is there like pictures missing because he skipped like five steps right now? Yeah. Yeah. I don't but know, man. I've been a big fan that's, of the I agree with you. Sometimes I do the same thing. You yeah. have to sometimes when you get in that low, I'm sure you're the same way. You're looking at some of the masters or or you get into a spot. He knows where he wants to you know, go, I'm sure, but yeah. he also has to be influenced by people oh, and dude, everybody else. So yeah. I feel the same way. I, you know, I, I lean I, on him too. I feel like I don't I, – I, like when he comes out with a piece like like that for Zeta Tank, I was yep. like, it inspired me. Like that, that tank inspired me. That fucking – the damn RT – RTIP what oh was, yeah but RTI PBE so right? that fucking I, I sat yeah, there yeah, and yeah, watched that, all, yeah, I looked at all the did. pictures and watched I was like <laughs> yeah how and then it just get back to the other end and it just flows back into each other and I'm like god damn it man you know I'm like on a circular piece yeah on a circular yeah. piece yeah, that's but yeah. I don't I, yeah, right. I really <laughs> I really don't look at that, and and uh, it doesn't depress me at all. Like, oh fuck, I wish I was there. No, it, it inspires me, but I also think that you know we all have a we all have a customer base. Like, yeah, for sure. all our shits on the internet, and then people see it and like, man, you know, when someone comes to me and loves my airbrush work, I'm like, thanks, man, because you know you seen these other guys out there, you know what I mean? But I still get money to Dude, do airbrush well, you're work. You're fucking good at airbrush. <laughs> <laughs> I say that to you all the time. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 I'm like, well, do you, see, do you see what you do? Yeah, like, hello, I, I appreciate that, yeah. but it's just weird because, like, you know, since I don't do it as much and I don't have the same enthusiasm as a lot of no, the guys here. I think maybe you answered your own question from, like, at the beginning of the interview a little bit. Like, your buddy who's got the hands yeah. in fine art, like, you just you just said it right there a little bit. Like, you hit a plateau and you're going, well, I can't charge more for this. Yep. What's the next step? Yeah. I think that's where you got to get a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit zen on yourself a yep. little bit. Yeah. Get a little bit quiet. Listen to your mind and, mm-hmm. and, and do what feels right mm-hmm. versus what everybody thinks will be right, yep. including yeah. yourself. And maybe the next move is something a little more scary. Yeah. Well, yeah. I can't do any more here, but I have this skill set. This is what my guts tell me, dude. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Yep. I'm painting motorcycles because it didn't fucking make any sense to me. Yeah. I finally said to fuck with it. This feels right. Mm-hmm. My son was just born. 
like I said, and I had to make it. And I said the the defining moment for me was I turned down a ten thousand dollar mural job mm -hmm. because it didn't fit the the path. I, and I, I wrote it down. I looked at it on a piece of paper. and I said, if it doesn't fall right here, I'm not doing it. Yeah, that's and what most people fail. Oh, ten thousand dollars! I'm I'm all over it. This is yeah. gonna make life easier. And I said it's gonna take me off my track. Yeah, yeah. And that was point. a big ballsy Focused. move that didn't go over well with some people around me at the yeah, time. Yeah. But it set me on a trajectory that took me where on mm -hmm. it, having this conversation with you yeah. right now in three years. Yeah. Four years maybe, something like that. That's quick. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. So I did what felt right. And there's there's putting that faith in the unknown. It's hard, it's hard for it's art. hard. It's hard for anything. You get a, a ten man. ten thousand dollar job pop up and you're like, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's not, it's not working with my this, program I'll, right now. Yeah. I'm I'm done with yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I've had I've had a heart like painting bikes for 10 grand I've done like a couple man I, I say this all the time I just don't enjoy the, mm -hmm. the relationship I gotta have with a customer so here's the weird question do you have the balls to sit there and say no I ain't into it yeah yeah I don't because totally, you know how much time yeah. it frees up for other things that come in that yeah. you might should be doing yep but I, I think agree, what yeah. people yeah I mean it's like you're in I an industry full of artist, badasses that sit there and bitch about having the same shit yeah, yeah. That's it's the like the well fucking do something different you know because yeah. I do the same thing I'm like man it's not really about the money it's about what yeah. you feel that is like we talked about this for hours yeah I mean you bite the path. and do what you what gotta path do yeah. gonna go. don't even be Buck was saying the same thing yeah. you know we're all everybody's trying to find a path what's best for Chase what's best for you know what your company here yeah and, and that job comes along and yeah the money's great but is it what you want to do remember we were yeah. saying the same thing yeah. on Instagram is like we were talking about this for hours remember like, yeah yeah you for know, sure where, what do you want people to know you as do you yeah. want to know, like, are, am I a helmet painter? Am I, you know, you, you really want to know where yeah. you're at, you know? Like, you do a ton of helmets, right? Are you just a helmet painter? You like, know, there was a point in time where I, I hated doing helmets, but now it's like I prefer to do them because mm -hmm. it gets, it, it allows me to explore my creativity in a much deeper fashion than right. whenever I have a 15 piece bike. Right. So, and there's a progression. There's a like, that's like real progressive thought to me. That, yeah. Like to me, that, that's a growth mentality. Yep. Like you're yeah. sitting there, you're already looking forward to, to exploring yeah. something I've oh, done there. You know, I, I mean, there's totally move, like when I was know? doing nothing but big wheel baggers in 2016 <laughs> yeah. and I started going to Dinas and FXRs yep, sure. and, and you got smaller. I got smaller <laughs> and in my, right my to the work. Helmet. There's the yeah. exactly. one piece. Yep. And it's literally <laughs> helped me like hone in my skills yep. more because, you know, because I'm totally guilty. If I have a full bagger to paint and I do a paint job that's like, I'm like, fuck, man, like this line here, this this thing would be a masterpiece. And then I look over here and it's like, man, I can't I can't justify this for the price in the time that I've allowed to do and this. I think everybody continuously runs into yeah. that issue. So what I like to do now, you know, like I, I sell my helmets at a price range, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I don't, I have, I have a, 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 a medium and a high range. Yep. And I just do whatever I think. I just keep adding until I'm satisfied with it. And every time I do a helmet, man, I'm fucking stoked. Yes. Yeah, and I feel great about it because I know I didn't stop myself because of money. Yep. You know, like, yeah. and I, it, so it'd be like the low end is like no airbrush. So it's just graphics sure. and, and, and leave. Mm -hmm. And then the other end is like with airbrush. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I just, those two prices. And that's it. You have it. to. And I fucking love it. And yeah. I'm, you know, I stay booked out for months at a time. And, that's awesome. And the other thing is like, and I've said this many times this podcast is like getting my customers to start buying my shit as art instead of a material possession for their bike. You know, like before when you would have people say, okay, well, I got the wheel, I got this, I got that. Now I need to get some paint thrown on it so I have the complete package. Well, if you're buying it for the material possession, you'll never respect me. You'll never respect this art process. And you're probably never going to be completely happy with it because you're buying this for a social status instead of buying it as... I want Steve Gibson art. I want Paint Zoo's art. I want the art of it, and then you buy it. And no matter how much sicker someone else's bike is, you're always proud of what you got because yeah. you bought yeah. it as art. Yep, sure. You know, and um, so far our helmets have kind of got to that place. And I'm, I'm fucking. That's people say what is being successful, and I think that's one of the things I think for artists totally yeah. to find success. Totally to jump out of bed every day to yeah. get back to it. Uh, that's yeah. a great feeling, <laughs> that's man. How I Even feel. when you're beat up yeah. from the day before. Yep. But it's, you just want to get back to your art. That's success. Right? It is. You know, for, you know, personal reasons or customer reasons. Yeah. You know, like I try to steer my customers to do something I would thoroughly enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know? and, then, and, and that's what's selling. 
Yeah. You know, you're you're not selling somebody else's yeah, sure. idea. Yeah. I mean, we all did it. We all did flames and true fire. Yep. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And trust me, so, I, I kind of wish it would make a resurgence because we can get our money back up. <laughs> yeah. Get right? a lot of self savings going on. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> But you'll but but you'll never drive drive it forward. You'll never drive your craft forward. Yeah, you know yeah. that's why like you know with the workshops and stuff like that, I don't hold any secrets. Yeah, you know I say level the playing field. Here's what I'm doing. Here's exactly how I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. Here's what I'm charging to do for it. Mm-hmm. It's right there to do with what you want. We've we've and, had and, this conversation you know, like a few times on the podcast, and it'd be great to get y'all because y'all both teach. How do you you know? Is there a level of acceptance to know that if you're going to teach people all your techniques, you're going to have a lot of people with your style for a while until they evolve? How do you feel about the whole idea of copying? Mm-hmm. What What is a blatant copy versus what is someone trying to learn how to do it? You know, because I think, I mean, you would see like someone airbrush on a bagger done some OG Able art on the back of it all the time, all over the sure. country. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like that's a blatant copy. Of well, something. reach out to OG Able and see if it's cool. Yeah. Yep. And that's that's my answer to that. Like I've had people grab my skulls. I've done, I've done coops. And, yeah, yeah. And just I, reach I out, man. Tag him, and he actually reached out to me one time. I did this like uh, yeah, coop devil helmet, yeah. and he reached out. I was like, hey, and if you rad, if right? you read it, it says, you know, hey, huge huge fan of coop, blah blah blah. Dude, I'm doing yeah, this helmet it. for you know my shop just because I appreciate his art and what it's done for my career. Yeah. And oh, inspired, yeah. and he actually messaged me and said, hey, dude, I appreciate you stop copying my fucking shit. And I was like, what? Like, and then I said to him, I was like, yo, um, did you read like what I wrote? And he's like, oh, dude. And he apologized to me. He's like, I just see stuff online and I go off and I get it. Like, cause people copy stuff all the time. But I was like, if you don't ever just give props to that or inspiration to what you're doing. Yeah. So I imagine they take your class and they're working on a piece, like extending their education Mm -hmm. with the artwork you taught them. And they're like, oh, do this. Or I'm doing this this yeah, way, I've but seen, yeah, it's yeah. just. Give I mean, props, how much? Like you know, you've like, always kind of created these really badass pieces that, that inspire people want to take the class, like the headdress, yeah, Indian, and the yeah, chick yeah. with the fucking hair and the fire. I would imagine that gets done a lot from people that just want to try to do that image because you've yeah. always kind of pieced together these really versatile images that that work on so many different like textures and techniques. Yeah, yep. you know, I see people doing that. Not I got a box, dude, a, dude. I got a box kit coming out with that. In, 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 it's, <laughs> you know, that, that, I actually no, see them yeah, doing it without taking class. going to walk class. people through my process yeah. and get you right there. That's yeah. cool. And the idea is, it's tank size. You can put that on a gas tank. Yeah. You want to put totally. that? Totally. So it's going it to be a there. video set or what? It's, no, it's it's all cut. I have it ready oh, to go. Okay. I just need yeah. to put the literature together. Gotta get the video stuff going, man. I know. I'm trying to, man. That shit is. I know. I totally. I'd subscribe to that shit. Yeah. I. I know. I'm behind. I think all of us would. I'm like a little bit behind on that. But no, you gotta, I mean, you gotta to sell like it like a uh, Ashley Madison or something, so everyone, <laughs> so, so everyone yeah. knows. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, you got it. Like someone walks to your shop, you get off the website. Dude, I'm, like a, yep. I'm a brooding fuck though, man. I'm just like, I just leave me alone in my cave. Let me do my thing. Yeah. Yes, I, I, that's that's the part I gotta work on. Is like, well, you know, okay. This is this is another thing that I, I've 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 had I've struggled with in my career is a love hate relationship with the art and the art creating process. And uh, I, if if I ever get jealous of anything, I get jealous of people's enthusiasm, like yourself. Like, like you're a hustling motherfucker out here. You're in this booth, this booth, that booth, and you're just on yeah. it. And I'm jealous of that that drive. You know what I mean? Because I've lost that a long time ago. Like I love being here, but I I like to be in this nice cozy environment to airbrush. And it usually takes me three days to get in the mood to do it. And then I finally do it. I'm like, fuck, why did I wait so long? And yep. you know what I mean? So I I, I kind of I'm. I wish I could find more of of an enthusiasm thing. See, I've always had that. Like, I, yeah. I just, it doesn't, you know. I used to. I just fucking yeah. go. Like, that's that's my drug. So like, I, used, I, I used to have a full studio yeah. in my house where I, I did canvases and, and all these different art things. And then I got into riding motorcycles. And then now, so when I would have free time, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to go ride. Sure. And then next thing you know, I'm like, fuck, man. Like, this is my hobby and this became my job. Yep. You know, and that's yep. been something I've been struggling with for the last couple of years is trying to, dude, I have skateboards and fucking old refrigerator doors and all this crazy shit that if I could just make myself go out there and do something on it, I'd have a lot of cool shit to, yeah, to show Yeah, but you just answered your own question. You have that self-reflection right there. You know what the problem is. Yeah. If, if in fact, it's a problem, there's nothing wrong with enjoying your life a little yeah. bit either. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, I, like I'm, I'm just the opposite. I don't take that time enough. And I know yeah. I don't. I mean, my... Dude, my parents even give me shit for it. Like, yo, 
like you're gonna burn out and yeah. I'm like I'm fucking burning out like yep. I'm <laughs> it just gets me more angry and yeah. I, you know it's like drives you more it does you know take whatever that that is and just and it's fuel like yeah. you know I pull on the shit that fucking pisses me off and I channel it you mm-hmm. know and it, yeah I take any time away from like when I'm not with my kids um, that's it yeah well, if I'm not being dad yeah. yep. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. grinding like yep. and I, yeah. I my girl puts that. up with it unfortunately but yeah like we're all the same like you know yeah, she's like sure. where are you my going wife, I'm like oh I got this my idea my wife would not give a shit if I stayed at the shop till 2 in the morning doing that all it's day amazing, yeah. but I'm at I'm out till 2 in the morning on my bike and <laughs> she's like what the fuck man? yeah right <laughs> but you're doing art she's good with it yeah, yeah. yeah. I know I don't stay out that late anymore but I used to yeah no, I think it's we all did yeah things. it's just fine and like I feel like you you're, you're tapping in with the helmets yeah, yeah. but I you know like I feel like I got to where I got to because like during the day I was doing, let's just say like the, the true fire and skulls. Yep. And then I would go home, I would put the kids to bed and then I would go back to the shop, mm-hmm. you know, at nine o'clock and then I would stay there till two. And I did that for years. Mm-hmm. Like people don't understand like, and it was during that time, during the dark times, the hours, when yeah. nobody, the world slept, I fucking worked, but I just painted what I wanted. Yeah. And I remember during that time going like, I, I felt so alive, I was so tired all the time. You know, I had two mm-hmm. young kids, Two yeah. years old and just born, to him. And, and, yeah, for sure, man. And I'm spending x amount of hours at night awake while they slept for the most part. And I felt so alive during that time because I felt like I was finally gaining, yeah, a, a direction, a path. And nobody, you know, and I wasn't putting shit on social media. Mm-hmm. This is like I would say this would be a time where nobody knew who the fuck I was. Mm-hmm. And it was, man, I felt alive. And yeah, and that, and that's what I, I keep chasing that feeling during that time. Right, where I was yeah. in my cave, mm-hmm. and I felt like I had this like laboratory of I had, ideas. I had, coming. I had a phase like that where I felt that way. Well, fucking you know? get it back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, it was before because before I was in there going like, man, one day I'm gonna be at SEMA, one day I'm gonna be on a cover magazine, one day I'm gonna be here, and then these things happen. And then what do you do? <laughs> and I'm like, and then you're yeah. like, dude, I'm done. I'm tired. Like, all right, what's the next thing? Like, I need yep. to make up a Narnia fucking place in space that oh once I do here I'm yeah but you don't want to be like the you know the high school quarterback chasing the glory <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and that's what Uncle I think Rico. of yeah Uncle for Rico sure yeah. well I've already been here I've already yeah. you know been there yeah. I've done that but I feel like and that's where I feel like I'm so married to the process of what I do yeah because yeah. there's a real there's a real life there mm-hmm. and I don't it doesn't get sick for me like it doesn't get tiring because I'm always seeing something get improved yep. yeah, you know yeah. and it still engages me because well, the still, process is what well, well isn't that what life is it's, yep. it is the journey kind of that's mm-hmm. what yep. process is, is yep. it's the journey of making yeah, making true. the art and that's and I and I don't know if that's just me or unique to my situation as a creative but that has always been the most important mm-hmm. thing to me and like I said I would have never made a good gallery artist because the end product I just quick throw it in the garbage can after working on it for a hundred hours mm. I got what I wanted out of it I don't give a fuck about the end of it <laughs> you know it's not good for paying the bills thinking mm-hmm. that way yeah. you know you get older and realize that you gotta make a living um, but I love the challenge of taking that like oil painting technique and trying to wrap it around the end of a, of a bagger uh, trying yeah. to wrap it around complex curves and surfaces and stuff like that little thing for RTI painting in yeah. a circle that was that was that was wacky to figure that out a little bit. Like I love that. It's a shit. challenge. Yeah, it is. It's the challenge right there. It's insane. And when that's done, I'm gonna go find something harder. And if I see somebody do something harder than that, I'm gonna try and double it. Like yeah, yeah. I'm competitive too. Yep. Like yeah. But I'm I'm driven, and I, I think just, that drives us all though. You know, just yeah, yeah. yeah, pushing the envelope and stepping out of your comfort zone a little bit. And but I get excited. Like, yeah, I you do. Genuinely, am like you fuck do. yeah. You know, this is probably a, a bad thing, but see, I try to. You know, in one sense, I try to do the most elaborate shit I can think of in my wheelhouse. Like, could I do a full airbrushed out helmet? Yes. But I, I'm scared to do that because then that'll be the demand for my customer base. I'll make sure it's the demand you want. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, next thing you know, it's like it's taking so long to do that. And once again, we're in that other but price put a price tag on that, though. Put yeah. a price tag on it. Do it for yourself. Yep. Put it out there. Yeah. You know, I read something once. I don't even know who said, find something you love to do. Put a price tag on it. How many billion of people in the world oh, right now? <laughs> There's enough people out there to find oh, you yeah. and pay you for that. Make sure it's what you want to do and what you want to love. Yeah. You know, yeah. what you love. That's what resonates with your clients. That's what makes mm-hmm. you in demand. That's what makes yep. you in demand. Yeah. You, when you genuinely love what you do, it comes through. It shows mm-hmm. through. You know, how many people out there look stale? There's yeah. a reason. They're burning out. Oh, they yeah. don't know what the next move is. And, and they happens. just know that they've lived outside their means. Yep. They got to hit this price point. They know that they've been doing it long enough. And they get to that point where it's like, ah. Uh, yeah. Bought too much shit. I gotta pay for it. 
All of a sudden, I got every you know, guy that works in the oil field. <laughs> <laughs> then the six, oil field six, drops. Six cars, and they're gone. Yeah, you know, yeah, they're all shit. trying to get a job at Popeyes. Yeah, <laughs> but they're yeah. trying to maintain a lifestyle that yeah. they're living outside their means and trying to. Isn't the cost of living out where y'all at pretty pretty high? It is if you live outside your means, but oh. if you're smart, it's yeah. like anything else. Just be smart, man. Yeah. You don't need to eat steak Have a every house day. And shop, yeah. You know, we. It's hard for everybody. I think it's relative. Yeah. You know. I mean, I think kids and life in general is expensive. Yeah. But, you know, colleges and all that other stuff that you're trying to think about when the kids get older. And yeah. That that's you know, but a lot of us like, I think. You know, we don't live above our means. No. You know? and we talk you about know? that all the time. Yeah, like, we you do. Know, mm-hmm. We're not trying to portray anything bigger than yeah. what we are. No, like, so neither one of you guys got like twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollar motorcycles out in the garage. No, I don't even see. ride a motorcycle. See, that's no. the thing. I is like I, I got a little hatchback that's I got two safety kit <laughs> seats in the back because that's what the state requires, <laughs> right. and I make sure that I can zip from yeah you know, CCD class for my son <laughs> to soccer practice for my daughter at the same time. Yeah, yeah. and try to find that's that it. balance. Like yeah. if I didn't have the motorcycle drug in my system, then I would I would definitely have. A much different lifestyle that mm-hmm. I could live, but yeah. I enjoy that that open road and taking those trips and yep. doing all that shit, and and then I want to do it on a cool bike because that's what I kind of do for a living. And yeah. next well, thing you know, you're advertising for sure. Kind of trapped in that whole yeah. that 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 cost of living in that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah. but I, I've kind of thought it down. I used to get I got into a bad habit of buying three or four bikes a year, trying to customize them. I, I'd kind of break even on all of them, but I'd have money tied up everywhere. And yep. yep. It just wasn't really working out too well, but yeah, I'm trying to simplify my life. I'm trying. <laughs> I think we all try a little bit, you know, and like we talked about, it's just really a process, yeah. you know, just it trying is, to figure out age. where you want to be it's in your career, yeah. where you want to be in your family life and, you know. What's well, priorities? Uh, yeah. It is. At the end know, of the day, it's priorities. I, I, I've settled down a lot too and we both, you know, we both had a lot going on and we've had a lot going on you know both of us together and i think that's actually brought us closer um, how was it as both of y'all working on the uh, the occ stuff totally different experiences from what my yeah. understanding totally is. different yeah we've talked about that too. we have a few yeah. times yeah mine was a real uh, definitely a grind yeah mine yeah. was you know actually amazing experience and we're actually still doing bikes for them. That's mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. Even though the show isn't there. Yeah. There's still, still work going on. So the show do work and it didn't work. I haven't seen it yet. Did, it was I don't know if they got picked up for another season or not. No. Nope. I don't think they did, right? No. Nope. But it's hard, to, it's hard to find that lightning in a bottle twice, right? Yeah, kind of it, things. it is. And I have a Did they try to do the same kind of process with I feel like I feel like the, the, uh, the whole uh, equation's stale, man. Mm-hmm. Like yes. Agreed. You know, they you need know, to show more truth in it. I think yeah. they need to see the blood, sweat, and tears that's behind it, but it doesn't make good TV, I guess. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that if they were to, yeah, that's exactly right. They, but they want reality TV. But that's some, what they could. They could still get that if they just. It's almost like if they would just let go of what was and look at it with a fresh pair of eyes and say, "How could we exploit this?" Yep. You know, in a way that's. that's but is it already being done on separate on other TV shows too? I mean, I think I don't the, know. The there's OCC. that many TV shows for motorcycle painting or any. Of that I don't shit. think so. I mean, no, I think not for that. But I mean, like, you have you know, I mean, like that was you know, the only thing. Customs has been on for how many years? Yeah. yeah. But that's the car. well, they do bikes there too. But they do. The, but I feel like I, I it's don't like know. they'll do car things and they'll explore ideas. But when it comes to bikes, there's like this only one formula right. that works. To be an all motorcycle show, but you same way. How how come like no one's ever really looked in deep into a a, a custom painter or paint shop? Like that would be an interesting fucking. But to show. who? But then I think that sometimes, and that's where like I I've given that a lot of thought too. You know, you hear somebody just recently said something. I think um somebody just made a made a post recently. It was about you know putting together a, a, a motorcycles art, not like a motorcycle as art, but motorcycle artists or, or custom painters. Yeah. Almost like, almost like the Sharon Williams booth. Yeah, in a, in oh, a way this pretty year. Much, yeah. Um, why don't they put together something like that? And I'm going like it's been done. It's been done over and over. Like I feel like Michael Lichter's show at yeah. Sturgis yeah. does that. I feel like that those venues have been there all along. But I think what people are are really asking is, is there an audience outside ourselves for what we do? Mm-hmm. I think that becomes a big question. Well, I it, mean, I. It, I think that's so. the question. I mean, you know, is I'm that what is that what the question is? Is, yeah. is my is my question because what everybody is saying here is is being done. It has been done. Well, yeah. you, if you look at like what all the shit like people banging on on making knives became a big hit on TV. No, but did it? Did it? 
I don't know, did it? It's on TV. It doesn't make it a hit. Oh, okay. Well, that's the way I see it. I think we got to see how many seasons to find out if it was a hit. Yeah. Or, or how many that, more. I guess that's what makes makes. Yeah. It, if you, you know, I mean, I obviously the tattoo to... thing was good, and then they explored different areas of art and yep. like Ink Masters, like with challenges and stuff. But yep. I feel like you can assemble whether it was like a bunch of custom painters working in different things like that or follow around like, like a series of artists from different parts of the country and just get like how they deal with the world but I shit. think it boils down to it's expensive to shoot that shit that way it yeah. it's super expensive to send those satellite guys around to get that yeah the coverage that, that and that information and get it back. I think it's a great and, idea Oh, I the mean, idea is fantastic, yeah. I mean, but is it? A, you know, does it have economy to it? Becomes I'm I'm a fan of all custom painters in general. Dude, no, I it mean, would be just it would be what, neat to see what that. their process is, and what like is, we were just talking to Ray Hill, yeah, and God, he's man. over in Denmark, and he's airbrushing with a yeah. spray gun, and you're like. I, I don't Dude's mind blowing It's yeah, it crazy and, and you he's sit there so and you, good at what he does And you sit there And you pick his brain And you're going I just want to sit in a seat <laughs> And just and watch, watch this. you Just yeah, do yeah. what you do The process from taking the truck All the way through And doing the mural To your graphics To pinstriping And I, I just want to watch Yeah he's a show Dude, himself What right? about but Absolutely like, That's just one show right What about there? that old like, Jesse James thing Where he like Went on that deal And went to that guy to do copper working on one of the motorcycle See, I manias. think he's asking good big questions right now and I think that people should listen to him a little bit more Yeah, because I feel like he's tired of the same shit too mm -hmm. and I don't think he'd be as vocal as he is right now if he was tired if it was right. like you know I yeah. feel like he's asking bigger questions which yeah. is there's, a, there's an art form to it I love this culture mm -hmm. because of the amount of artisans and craftsmen that come together for one project Yeah, yep. it doesn't happen anywhere else Creed. for anything and any other reasons mm -hmm. I think that is so unique to, and I think that's what keeps me so well, so happy here mm -hmm. what a, what, like so you know, last night we were at the at the uh, I water party right sure. and there was a lot of people there and so we left a little bit early and we went to the Sosa party yeah that fucking party was Huge, and all these people are fabricators. Yep, and it's kind of a, a test to like how much fabrication, if like, like media there is out sure. there versus how much custom paint media there is out there. So I feel like you That's know kind of a testament to what you're doing right here too. Yeah, which is thank sure. you for that. Uh, yeah. you know, no problem. Absolutely. Thank you guys right you. There for sure. So I feel like you know with all these paint companies, maybe you know maybe they could start to look at how can we help inspire people to want to get into this world it's almost like cultivating your next generation of customers but right? maybe that's our responsibility and i think that's that's it i think that yeah, it I is almost, our responsibility 100%. i almost said how do we go, take that we can't stage and do but i think that's what we're doing right now yeah true i yeah, think by, by showing doing. up every day and continuing to do what we do and You're ask inspiring. bigger questions that i mean you know you need good ears too you need sure. good listeners and you need people right. who have to want it but like you know you need to have that drive you need to show them that there is there is a life yeah. here that there a lot you know not not just a living a life like, yeah mm -hmm. you know yeah. really something at the end of your days to look back at and mm -hmm. go you know I, I left something i left a legacy yeah. right? whether it was you know fully fulfilled on your end i mean just the effort in in you know fuck the man mentality yeah. i'm not joining that world yep. i'm leaving my mark and doing yeah, it yeah. my way that's our response it's not sherwin williams responsibility it's not, it's yeah. not mm -hmm the bigger corporation's responsibility. That, but that's they us. could definitely sponsor and support they it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. They could. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, and I think to, to some degree they try, and I yeah. think at times they don't understand that true. they could have a larger role there. I'm not waiting around for them. Like, yeah, and, that's, that's, and that's just me. I'm going to find out how I got to do what I got to do every day to, to feed my soul yeah. and put food on the table. Mm -hmm. I'm not waiting around. I'm not looking for anybody else's answers. I'm fucking, I'm, I've never done it that yeah, way. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not asking for permission to do it my way. Mm -hmm. I'm not asking you if it's all right for me to do it this way or that way or say what I got to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it you is. Know, what, but it, that, that, know, so that's, that, that's kind of what I was getting at is like, for me, like I'm investing in cameras and I'm, I'm getting to a point where myself, I'm finding that same artistic like love I had when I started airbrushing for creating artistically like I'm a big film lover mm -hmm. yeah, I think cool, not man. all mm -hmm. film like you can't ask me all the oh, well, that was so and so and so <laughs> I just like watching the shit and I can see and I've gotten a lot into documentary type stuff lately and I've been cool. way more interested I wonder if interest. you could make like you're taking your love for what you love and you do it that's what I'm, I'm trying to do you know what I mean yeah. like what you're well, doing you know now what? this this hasn't Tim been done Hoefler, yeah. the guy like, who's been doing all Sean Williams shooting lately he's yeah. been putting together the video oh, I don't know oh, if you met Tim he does a good job yeah, yeah. 
All right, yeah, I, I exactly what you're that. saying. It's the same. It, res, it that would be, resonates with him in the, sa- in the same way. Because That's your cool. relationships with guys like us and knowing what what yeah. the process is already. But I think what you're saying, you're dialing into what I think everybody's yeah. saying, and there's an undercurrent, I think, with most of us, is that there's something, you know, meta, there's something mm-hmm. bigger here than just Green. flaking and, and panel yeah. painting <laughs> and throwing a candy on it and calling yeah. it done. Like, you know, I think that there's a deeper understanding a deeper meaning you know I feel like back to our original conversation about airbrushing you know my love for oil painting that I I would say I'm repurposing through an airbrush yeah there's a lineage and a conversation that goes back over half a millennium what I love about what we do in this culture is it's so uniquely American Mm -hmm. honestly it's so there's a lineage like like I was looking at Tukey's paint job at at Sharon Williams and there's an understanding of the the history of what he's doing and you see it in what he's doing today Mm -hmm. it's paying tribute to the guys before him Mm -hmm. there's an education right there that Mm -hmm. he's a real student of what he's doing and I feel like this is what a lot of people miss custom painting it's like who's putting this on what and I'm just going to mimic it it's back to the whole mimic what you're seeing versus Mm -hmm. being a student of what you're doing and I feel like more people are are starting to gain wind of that that like you know what it's not Let's doing what, doing what the latest trend is, it's it's why is it the latest trend, and let's let's look back would, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Would and you think that uh, perhaps like a lot of why, I mean, think about it, like custom paint in general, whether it's airbrush or just the, the art of custom painting, is only a couple of generations old. Sure, not even a hundred years old for the most part. Sure. So we're very we're kind of the originators, uh, or a, it's very you know, early very, on by comparison to yeah. a lot of other art forms. To art, yeah. yeah. So, so what a unique oil. what a unique yeah. place to be. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to set a for the next generation. For the next generation, but when you look at the history of any craft, mm-hmm. how many people out there can say that about the industry or the craft that they're in, so to speak? Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Because the metal I mean, It's always going to be the outliers of, of the people, like your, you know, all the old artists of the past, the outliers in that world that did something that set themselves apart from the, the yeah, everybody else. Yeah, but they wind up influencing the mainstream long term, too. Yeah, true. Because mm-hmm. eventually people look at what they're doing in the area that they are it and comes they feel. Back. It does, and it goes, this is stale. This is, dude. Like, do you remember like the grunge days when flannels came in? Yeah. There were flannels walking down the runway in Paris, France. Yeah. You, like, like, <laughs> like yeah. seriously, Seattle think style. about the yep. yes, dude. Think yep. about that. The ripped you know? jeans. Uh, yeah. But there was a like there was you know my point is like there was a rawness and a real authenticity there that resonated all the way to the top of the fashion industry that was being bought at re, you know secondhand thrift stores in yeah. in, in the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> Uh, but what's that tell you about the passion and, and the and the voice of of that? What was mm-hmm. going on? Yeah, you know. Huge. At the end of the day, that's it's got to have soul. It's got to have a meaning. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's only get you know superficial value only lasts for so I, long. I, I think that a lot of the guys are influencing like even you and you and like styles. That's yes. yep. that's our grunge. That's our oh without a doubt. Our, our you know well, bringing you know, like a guy like you that's bringing thought into it and. But I'm like even me, too. I was like, I was yeah. like I told you this, and I I, I love to improve every day. Yeah. And I would sit there and go, and I, we've had a long, a long drive. Yeah. And we'd sure, sit there, man. and you're talking, yeah. and you're like, wow, man, I I was in a rut. Yeah. And then I yeah. see and pick his brain and 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 talk to other people mm-hmm. and Kyle or whoever, and you're going, wow, like man, like I need to really step up my game because all these other influence that I'm watching, like you know biker build off and they did this leafing and i'm like ooh, okay but you gotta remember that's all we had mm-hmm. you know now with the instagrams and the little videos and things like that like and like the artwork yeah is is incredible now like mm, you is. know you look like javier and, yeah for and you're sure. like what what i've followed Holly, javier and Dude, jonathan for like, yeah, ever because they were man. in my area in yeah area. for sure it was you like know? javier jonathan um alan alan yeah, yeah it was like those those, those guys, three those right three there were the mecca mecca yeah and then i've already I still, known jonathan's i mean jonathan's i love sick, man. jonathan's work is so <laughs> tight yep. and crisp so and, tight yeah yep. he's so good but those are guys that influenced and like the stephen driscoll's that i looked up to yep. whether he was painting a t-shirt or a freaking lights of i could care less yeah. it was the technique and the process of how he did it and that's why when you're looking at a guy like Steven like the process that he's bringing into the game Mm -hmm. is like wow no one's ever done that yeah so how do you what's the like you said I I went over your cylinder right and I'm like looking at RTI and I'm like 
the colors, the blends, and yeah. it's just the smoothness of it, you know, where me blending colors. It's always, like, like, it's always like when you do your stuff, it's always the right tone. Right. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. That's like part of the, the process of building. That's, yeah. that's the I've, opaque buildup. I've build watched up. him it's, do it's the process. It's subtle adjustments left and right that, you, that you, have contr- you have such control over yeah. it. And the ability to kind of to go back and forth mm-hmm. where really, really. I would be afraid to go back in and I'm like well, what's I'm the difference muddy. between trans- transparent and opaque exactly. like transparent I, there's a I'm gonna ah, muddy I'm gonna, it up I'm gonna I'm fuck gonna, it so up that's exactly on your, on your transparent colors are are you so you're saying like you're in that same value trans, tone trans color over opaque value mm-hmm. that's it separate the two instead of trying to marry them okay um and again, it's an old process, you know. What was the name Oil of that uh, that that process? That Grisaille, it's Grisaille. Is it G R I S? Okay. It's a French word. I think it's a Grisaille. monochrome. Grisaille. Yeah. Okay. And we're we're it, writing uh, that down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but For yeah, sure. I mean, it's just it's basically just building up. You know, it's a black and white painting, but instead of just using black and white, you're using all the gray tones in, in the middle for the most mm. part. Um, Awesome. You, you, but you know and it's like I always say stay inside the box everybody's like be an outside the box thinker I'm like fuck that find your box put your tools in there stay there mm-hmm. yeah. master them and then start looking out like yeah. you know I feel like when people get really loud they're distracting from from something else mm-hmm. so yeah, you know sure. mm-hmm. yeah it's always like the, the I, I tend to lo- like uh, more clean paint jobs now I have a hard time doing them sometimes like uh, like Darren Wenzel great fucking artist like Dude, best out there can kind period of, man do a paint job and then like there's all this open space and for me like my head doesn't work that way I'm like you want to fill it has to go there dude mm-hmm. but you're looking at his paint it's like how what that told you to space. stop what told you to stop and say this mm-hmm. is done now you know what I mean mm-hmm. and sometimes I, I lack that uh, that self control mm-hmm. to walk away from that's something. why I look at guys like the Drew Struzans and stuff it's yeah the composition yeah and it's built on every I don't care if you're painting a bike or laying flames or whatever you're doing at art composition yeah you yeah. know the way you have and you're you're bringing like you know a, a portrait over to the right a little bit it makes a huge difference dude the, yeah the it's those that, it's like, knowing this, this or, or like nuances a, of so little things back yeah. to that Frazetta tank like knowing which part to pop out of the image onto the graphics like that changed the whole dynamic of that yeah thing. for sure like not the whole thing yep. but just just uh, enough I always say just a little bit well you know what it does it shows thought um, what's his uh, I was asking Josh Culliver oh yeah he was striping the other day and I'm not a striper like mm-hmm. I mean I feel like if I really gave it an effort I yeah. could be pretty good at it mm-hmm. but it's I've always been like I don't want to be a jack of all trades master mm-hmm. of none I, I found my, my shit and I want to be the best at it yeah mm-hmm. um but I was watching him stripe and you know he's laying out a really asymmetrical pattern has such balance to it and I'm just I'm, you know I was picking his brain I was like well, why, why are you doing that he goes it shows thought mm-hmm. I could have just gone like this but I stopped and came back yeah there's a little uh, you, know you know who does that too nubs nub nubs yeah. nubs another one nubs and Pete Finland yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like I, I want to we could go PPG. on and on right oh, here dear. yeah for sure like, but there but there's it, your answer to me it doesn't make it sense it just shows yet it does you know, why are you coming out of the it? graphics yeah. with the pinstripe where us we're thinking like we need to stay in that that framework and nubs goes whoop and comes out and you're like oh, why okay it works it flows like, it, it works. just does but yeah. that was probably the 5000th time he did that exactly. yeah. and there's something said yep. you know don't come in and, and expect to like be the master in one year by taking a fucking three day class Y'all, you ever heard right. the theories of like the uh, 10,000 10, hours? hours yeah yep Fuck that, man. I mean, you know? yes and no. Like, <laughs> I feel like everybody wants to marry themselves to an idea of success. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, just, I'm totally into the secret. The secret? I'm just playing. Dude, <laughs> the oh, secret. I'm about ready to drop this mic and walk out the door. Yeah, right. Mic drop. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah, I, well, I've, re- I've read the Outliers book and it was really entertaining and uh, it kind of resonated in some things, but I do agree with you. Like, I, I don't, don't, yeah, I feel like everybody tries to define success yeah. and success is waking up every day, going and doing something you don't want to do, yeah. knowing that someday it's going to be what you want to do. Yep. And it's during that time that really fucking sucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't want to be awake all those years at night, yeah. but I found, I found a magic there that I wouldn't have found it otherwise. If you didn't do it, yeah. But, and I think that's it. Everybody, I don't have the time. Bullshit, you don't have the fuck fucking time mm-hmm. oh, you don't go to time. sleep dude yep. <laughs> like it's it's that simple it's not 10,000 hours it's you gotta want you gotta want it dude yep. you, you might be able to do it, it in 100 hours I don't know I yeah. mean I don't know what that is but I know a quality 100 hours over a slack 100 hours is a big difference true you know it is. so I, I was I was I got lucky because I worked in a custom paint shop 
that did a lot of production work. So I was able to pick up an airbrush every day. So six months after I started, I had an okay look. But being able to touch that airbrush every day and go to work Helps. working on someone's it, stuff. It, you it, can't get good at anything unless you do it. It polished it a little bit. Yeah. And then, uh, same yeah. thing with graphics, pinstriping, all, all that shit. So yeah. uh, I, I agree with you. Like, I wish... You know, just the circumstances of me growing up in the paint world, I had to learn how to do graphics, striping, painting. Sure. And so, like, I've... But I never want to use it as a crush. Well, well, I'll never be as good as Steve Gibson because I had to do all of it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I still But I'm sitting here going, I'm never going to be as good as Victor Grasso. He's, like, yeah. my best friend at home. Mm -hmm. Like, we all have that, like... You have that look up. But if you got nothing to chase, go find something else to do. Yeah. True. You know? True. Like, I, that's, and I'm all right with, like, losing every day, and that's mm -hmm. how I feel. Like, if you're comfortable. You'll never get any better. No. Like, I'm always the chasing process. something better. Yeah. You know? It, what a rad thing. Like, I got to wake up today. I got to do something. Well, I'm not there yet. Yeah. So I want to take that to my grave. Mm -hmm. Like, nice, it gives nice. me a reason to just keep going. And do you need to go yet? What's your nah, time thing? I think thing? I'm all right, man. You good? Yeah. yeah. A few more minutes, cool. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Sweet. But yeah, that's that's kind of it, man. Like, finding different ways. But, you know, what do you think about, like, all the people coming to your classes, like the new generations coming up in paint? Do you think that we have a good positive outlook on things coming or a good positive direction and things are going? Or Well, I mean, I think that, I don't know if you could agree with this. Like, if you're... You know, if you consider yourself kind of like a leader about what you're doing, let's, if you wind up in a position where you're teaching someone, yeah, somebody, you know, like Rob Churchill in the art mm -hmm. circus or whatnot, he saw something in me and said, you know what, I think that you'd be good teaching a class. Mm -hmm. So he's putting a faith in me that I, I embody something that he digs that he thinks other people will dig also. Yeah. So I have to trust him as the leader of the circus, the ringmaster yeah. of his mm -hmm. circus, that he sees something in me and there's an honor and a privilege in that. And... It's I also have to, being I have serious to, about. Well, yeah, teaching, oh, yeah. It's like, not. It's yeah. It's, it's like. Not I mean, I take it very out, seriously. Yeah, you know, and that's I learned why a lot actually super from late. teaching from him how to teach. Yeah, the there's a real art there. You know, there, there's you a, a be real art. Such a good yeah. listener, in yeah. my yeah. opinion. Yeah, it's I not learned a lot dictated. from teaching that I was taught from him. Like yeah, yeah. just in the process of how you get what you want to get across. Mm -hmm. in, in, in but you want you want to keep people inspired too, right? You know, mm -hmm. like in there's a, a short, real because there's only sometimes like I mean, you yeah, there's a real class. So how do you? But I feel like that's a learned thing over Correct. time. Like yeah. I, you know, I remember like Jen and I were teaching a class, and it was going great, and then we moved them into color, and it became like fucking like everything became the Joker right in front of my eyes. It went from like awesome to holy shit. The whole class just took a shit right in front mm -hmm. of us. <laughs> And it never happened again. We, you know, write down notes, not don't lead them in this direction yeah. again kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but it's like fine tuning. I, you know, I I don't know how many workshops I'm in at this point. I feel like I'm probably at like 30 some at this point. Um, just doing the airbrush thing. But I also have that like 12 years part time work at, at an art center. Yeah. I also know that when I wasn't teaching that there was a really good percussion teacher drummer who had such a way with his students that when I had time to kill, I'd go sit in and watch him teach. Yeah. So what I've always done is watch good teachers teach. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they'll show you a lot of things. They, you know, their students will cue them in the direction that they guide them, you know. Yeah, because I, I agree. There's a difference between a, a fabulous artist and a good teacher. Yeah. yeah. Like, and it goes back to what you were saying about, like, finding a fabulous teacher that actually has skills to teach. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and that's the hard thing. It's something that I feel like's really, really gotten lost in a lot of these, yeah. these art I've schools, so to, to speak. I've been to seminars with fabulous artists, and I couldn't get anything across. And I actually knew how to do, and I've told you about yeah. this. I've no, and yep. I've looked up, and I'm like, ah, oh, I got nothing from it. Yeah, yeah. And, even though they're, I look up to their artwork doesn't mean that they're a fabulous teacher. No, that's doesn't make what, him a bad person. It's just not their no, thing. No, it's but just I not feel their like thing. Where it's he It's the does, teacher's responsibility. He gets like you're saying, where you need to well, be. That, you know, with, yeah. with the in in with the explosion of everybody going towards the teaching route as a as a you know obviously a place to teach people, but as another source of income for a lot of us painters. But I see, I see, that, and that's where I like I defer right there. Be, be, what's your motive for teaching? Is it for additional income, or is it because? passion yeah you want you yeah. want to play for you want to pay for it proper yeah you know and i think like what dictates that is if you have a bad experience as a student that's gonna suck yeah you know what i'm not gonna put my money out for somebody else to teach me because they're so and so and they think that they they've earned the right and the privilege to teach because yeah. their art's recognized mm -hmm. not necessarily mm -hmm. you know what i mean like Good when point. i show up there my agenda is to make sure that these people are 
Yeah. Yeah, Whether there's a life from. lesson there or an art lesson there, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. It's it's you know They're I'm gonna I'm, something out of well it. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm in, I'm in a I'm in a very privileged position to wield influence. Yeah. There's a real responsibility that comes with that that I think gets overlooked I by a lot of these teachers that think I'm going to show the scratching method. No, no, no. Like, let's see, let's see the motivation behind it. But let's see why this person's here, what their experience has been as an artist, what they're bringing to the table, or why what, are you scratch, why are you using that scratching technique when I can, you can use that. But what, 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 why are you? Using why are you that? using it? Because like, because everybody else uses it. Because or, that that thing that well, got two thousand likes on social media correct. dictates your yeah, your move. Yeah. Right. Like, and that's, it's a whole. Yep. Different that's dynamic. So what, there. what I'm kind of wondering is, uh, you know, as someone who hasn't taught before, mm -hmm. you know, maybe that first like bump to try it would be a financial gain. But I think that if you start doing it, because I've sure been around, yeah. but when you're around somebody that generally wants to learn something, then that uh, lights a pilot fire for something else that you didn't Fuck get yeah. at right. first. Yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. I, I, mean, can, I, yeah. I can see it. Like if, if they said, hey, you know, you want to come teach this class and, I, you know, you start getting a little anxiety. Like, what am I going to teach? How am I Dude, every time. Blah, every blah. time I go in, I'm like, uh, it doesn't go away. You know? Yeah. You know, and then, but I think once you get around people that are that are kind of jazzed up about you yeah. and what you're trying to show them, it, it, it lights a different fire in but you. But it's your responsibility yeah. to make sure that you don't you don't snuff out their spirit. Exactly. And, and, I, and, I and think that's, that's what I was trying to get at. big thing right there. that's It's on you. It's on you. So the many of these, these people, or, or not just these people, but people, just say people, trying mm -hmm. to do these classes now, it's a viable market to make some money and sure. Sure, grow the pay scene. Our bills. Absolutely. Grow the scene. But if, if a lot of people don't take it seriously as you are taking it seriously, then it could ruin that for everybody. It could. Mm -hmm. As know? a collective group, absolutely. Yep. You know, you, you're hurt, be hurt a, by being an asshole. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, I, I totally I believe that. We're not that. taking your responsibility to teach seriously. Yeah. But if there's two people, in the, you know, if there's five people teaching great and three people not, those three people are reflecting on all of this. And yeah. vice versa. You know, if yeah. somebody has a great experience in my class, they're going to expect that experience in every other class. You know, it's kind of up to us to kind of police ourselves yeah. being like, yo, you got a responsibility here. If you're going to be part of this group, you got you got to bring it. You got to be professional. And I think that a lot of times that there's this preconceived notion that huge party scene, huge egos, huge everything, mm -hmm. and and that sucks. That sucks for all of us. That sucks trying to move something forward I think because we talked about this too. We have we, we not came you, th yeah. from a different generation where you know we didn't have that. Yeah. Who the hell would teach us? Like there were no classes. There no. Were no Drew Blairs. There were nothing. Mm -mm. So bringing that back and going, God. You know, Bobby wants to learn how to airbrush. Well, yeah, I, did. I was Bobby. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I, 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 want, I want to be that dude. You know, you I know? used to hear stories about, like, when uh, airbrush action was kind of, like, doing this thing for the years and years and years. Oh, there were the glory days where there yeah. was some real. There was some, there was a lot of people that, like, never really got anywhere art-wise, but just it was their thing to come and be at all the art, or all the uh, airbrush art yeah. classes. Yeah. It's like that was there's there a real who, that was yeah I mean there's it was definitely a scene. a scene and I'm yeah. not saying that yeah. you know I think just by virtue of what you do you're already collectively an outsider yeah. you know yep. you were already the kids at the back of the bus just mm -hmm. by proxy man yeah. by what we do so I mean no need to pour gasoline on that fire <laughs> yeah. but I think what catches people off guard every now and then is when you can be professional and be the kid at the back of the bus mm. like I know like you know when I was in high school. Like I was, you know, my senior year, I was in the, the National Honor Society. I'm sitting in the front row throwing the devil signs in my National Honor Society picture. <laughs> like you can be both. You know what I mean? Like it's, you know, beg the question, question the man. Yeah. You know, but you don't have to be the fucking asshole puking in the corner either. Yep. Yeah. Like maintain a sense of self and yep. responsibility and, and be presentable. Yep. And I think that, you know, I that would it, push this forward a little bit. It you shows know? in your classes, though, you know, you know from helping like work with you in those classes i've learned how to be a better teacher yeah in yeah. general and it I, i've had that drive we've talked about yeah this. Fuck i've you, had that dude, drive dude. too but it doesn't mean i'm a great teacher yeah but yeah. when you find someone and you can you know but have I think the same you, values as you yeah. but oh, you like, go at it with the right motivation right you, you know? it's, it's about the students it's not about a scene or who's who or 
you know, which dick swings bigger. You know, it's not yeah, about that. Yeah. It's about like, what's that guy gonna get out? Because he's paying thousand dollars to be at Dude, class. Dude, he's paying a lot of money, so, and it might be one of so, his two weeks of work off a year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and he's choosing that to spend that he's time going with to a you. Gibson class for a reason. You he's know, not, he's learning. He wants. He's to got learn a wife techniques. at home. He's got kids yep. at home, yeah. and he's choosing yep. to go hang out with a forty-three-year-old dude yep. and paint pictures in a fucking <laughs> hotel. Yep. Yeah, uh, you yep. got to reward that dude. Like, yeah. I mean, there's yeah. a real like. Yeah. But I feel like if you're just getting into the teaching thing, make sure your head's right about it. Make sure yeah. your motives are right. You know, granted, there's there can be decent money in it, but don't do it for the money. Everybody's yeah. always, and I think any successful people, a person will tell you that, don't do it for the money. Do it because there's a love there. Like, I was fortunate that I had great people around me yeah. teaching me. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, you know, I remember talking to some of them later as I started to find successes. I'm still friends with some of these people from 20 years ago who are you know, pushing 80 years old now. Damn. And they're going, dude, it's really cool watching you find these different successes because I remember when we were sitting here and you, you know, you, you, know, you were cocky and I like, sh- sh- you know, smack you down to the ground, old school style. Just, yeah. you know, I remember my first job, I put my portfolio down. My boss came out with like his three portfolios, dropped them on top of mine and goes, that's what a fucking portfolio should like. This is what I'll pay you if you want to work here. That was my first job you interview. You coming in. You know, and I'm going, uh, you know, you think you're the shit, and then you're fucking yeah. real it, quick. It's got to be a hard like thing, though, right? Because working in this industry and you start finding successes, it does boost up your confidence and, and stuff I, like I that. I don't know. I, man, I, I, keep the, I keep the line. I yeah. don't – I think it's good if you're trying to find work, but, like, I'm trying to put food on the table. Doing, like I said, if, if, if anything trumps – trying to do what you want to do like I don't let anything get more important than me showing up and trying to paint the best picture I've ever painted every fucking day Mm -hmm. nothing will ever be more important to me than that as far as what we do for a living Mm -hmm. if if exposure or or you know who you're working with or who you're working for or where you've been gets bigger than that you're gonna run into trouble that's just what I've seen and that's the way I feel about it like I don't like right now I'm, I'm getting itchy because I know that my shift down at Sherwin Wind I can't wait to go downstairs and paint my fucking Peter Fonda yeah. like I'm ex- I'm genuinely excited yeah <laughs> paint my Peter <laughs> that's a whole nother conversation yeah. bro I'll leave the I'll leave the room if y'all want to have that one <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's cool but, but no yeah no I think like and like I think if you wanted to get into the teaching game and you're afraid to do it but you've been you've been doing it like say you've been doing what you've been doing for a long time mm-hmm. and you know your craft and you genuinely want to pass that knowledge on to yeah. the next generation, just that act and and the desire to do it for the right reasons, you'll be a fantastic teacher. Yeah. Cool. cool. But yeah. be a good listener too. Like I feel like the best teachers were, were the even better listeners. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. You know? And that's uh, and, and I was gonna get at this because you know when I'm home or when I'm everywhere else, I really don't feel like I have an ego until I'm around a bunch of you guys that I see don't have one, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I need to calm the fuck down. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you you know well, everybody confidence here, and ego. Exactly. Ask yourself and which I, is which. I, you know? I have a hard time understanding which one is which sometimes. I really mm-hmm. do because you know when it comes to talking business per se with companies, you know I don't want to come off weak or unconfident yeah. with myself I want them to know that if I'm here and I'm I'm bringing my shit I'm, I'm a professional at it yeah. but there's always these fine lines of ego confidence professionalism you know not taking any shit from anybody yep. you know what I mean yeah so yep. I, I find I find myself having a hard time uh, staying within certain boundaries of that you know what I mean because you know, I'm not an ass kisser. That's the other thing. No, and, I'm not an ass kisser yeah, either. You know, no, not even but your work bit. speaks for it. So you're sought out because you, you, I think that you provide a great service to SEMA because of your, your hustle with doing the art and all the booths and doing it, which I, I don't have the desire to do. No, but you're doing it right now. Yeah. We're doing it right now. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, you see, you're, you're defining something in a way that you think is defined but you're doing it. You're taking okay. time. We're sitting upstairs at SEMA right now. SEMA's going on right now, yeah. and we're all sitting here yep. shooting the shit about like what could be better about what we do mm-hmm. and how do we go about you're doing bringing it. it. You're okay. bringing it. Dude, you're, yeah, what I you're doing you right before. now trumps everything that <laughs> yeah. we're doing downstairs. What you're doing is giving us a platform to explain what we're doing and why yeah. we're doing yeah. it. I agree like, totally. You are like a key ingredient in the discussion that we're having. We talked well, about this too, so, remember? Yeah. I said, dude, I appreciate what you're doing for our industry. Because they need to know. Yeah, yeah. You get to listen to like like Poland or 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 Gibbs and you're like, whoa, like I didn't know that about him. Yeah. Like yeah. or just 
you know, driving with like seven artists on a, on oh my a God, seven hour masters. trip. Yeah, you're you know. like, wow, I didn't realize everybody goes through the same shit. You did the conversations like, the same. It's the same shit over yeah. and over. I didn't get paid by this guy or that guy. And you're like, wow. Or like, this guy's trying to take me like a chump. Yeah. Or this guy's trying to like, take me like Like everybody has the same. And when you go back, like I can't wait to go back to home and start well, creating shit. One of the best things that's happened in our industry is once – not that artists weren't uh, very vocal and, and friends. Sure. Well, I feel like this is a great time to be an artist. I feel like more of us are closer to each other than we've ever been. Yeah, we're realizing there's power and in numbers a little exactly. bit too. Exactly. So we yeah. don't get bullied as much from uh, mm -hmm. from the shops and, the, and 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 end up having to devalue our work mm -hmm. price wise mm -hmm. to meet a standard from somebody. You know what I mean? So oh, absolutely. I think that's kind of change. I, it it. I was talking to Lady Sherman Williams. Like, there's so much shit changing, and it might feel subtly slow. But things are changing everywhere. Like our magazines are going away. You know, uh, even the car ones are taking a little bit longer, but they're on the same path. They're going to be gone within the next five to ten years. Yep. Now we have this internet where everybody's their own marketer, everybody's their own brand, mm -hmm. and companies don't know where to put their money. They don't know where to invest. They don't know, you know, because now not only do you have to be a painter and 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 hone your craft, now you got to figure out how to market your craft. Which has always been one of the hardest things for most artists. Yep. Yeah, for you know, sure. Yeah, because it, it takes yeah, a level absolutely. of it takes a level of confidence or maybe ego, however you look at sure, it. I sure. don't know to to make it push it in people's faces to show. Look at me. You know what yep. I mean? Yep. Yeah, and I, and, you know, I think we all struggle with that a little yeah. bit. You know, there's, I, I and think we that's try to find the, the sensible. Part. Yeah, because yeah. if you don't have an ego, and you just want. To me, everything, um, just coming from a military background. Yeah, for sure. Like, I, I don't, I'm not a pusher. Like, yeah. I just want to be able to put shit out there and go, hey, if someone likes it, they like it. That's yeah. what we were talking about, the stained yeah. glass thing. Yeah, He's like, sure. oh, you're known for the stained glass tank. And it's I'm like, tank. Dude, it's it's my, I, it is probably I, I'm my an sick, airbrush my favorite guy. Like, yeah. tank you know what I'm saying? But I was so really. sick of seeing the same shit over and over again. I told Brian, I'm yeah. like, I said, dude, I got something that might be pretty cool yeah and i was like it's different he's like well i changed it a little bit How but did, it's not a fingerprint it's not you know all kinds of you know low rider shit it's just you know i was inspired off my grandma how do you, know, you how do you glass. find yourself like being the helmet guy <laughs> I, I, I don't you know hate it. Like, i know I you was, hate it but like doing all the hockey helmets so you do all the uh, quite a few flyers yeah, yeah, um yeah i've done pittsburgh and minnesota and detroit but i, I don't know i i think i just you love hockey though too yeah i played yeah, hockey so there's that, for a okay, while, yeah, since right. i was four so i've so always wanted like, to be a sports illustrator mm. but you know I work down the shore where he's at. That's yeah. why, you know, it's so funny because we, yeah, we didn't know yeah, each we, other, but nah, we kind of ran past. Like, yeah. yeah. But, Felt you know, the, you know, it's, it's for me, it's just being like inspired by all kinds of stuff. Cause I, I stripe, I love to stripe more, but yeah. I'm inspired by like the nubs and those guys and it pushes my envelope even further. But yeah. But like, even your RTI thing that you did. The, <laughs> yeah. That was the last Dude. minute. It was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. you just sit there and uh, you know, you're, I mean, I cheated. That I, style. I only, I only I had a day, but like I saw I art influence gonna... in there. I'm going, fuck. Dude, I've been there's a lot of influence Dude, in there. There's a ton, I, yeah. I was telling you, ton of educated yeah. influence. I was telling you when I, when we first got here on Monday, I was like, man, on these helmets, like, I've been wanting to do like these portraits in in other forms of art, like like the the pop cult, the, yeah. the pop art or the mm -hmm. the vector art style and different shit, just to kind of, you know. So for me, I look at it like, oh, this is another way to tackle a face or a portrait. It's still art. It's just in mm -hmm. a different genre of art. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? For sure. Yep. So it's funny because I looked. I actually watched a documentary on Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol. Uh -huh. Back in you know like two months ago, and I'm sitting. I'm like, wow. You know how can you know when we put these things up there i want to you know everybody wants to stand out a little bit like his stuff is like incredible and i'm like oh yeah he's gonna put <laughs> i can't airbrush like that yeah. with his style he has his own style but i want to i want to try something different i want to yeah. do something because i only have a certain amount of time so like what can i do to you know still have that art influence mm -hmm. you know and but it's gonna make it where he's got some airbrush up there we got a little bit of this we got a little low rider because danny d and all these people did a lot of different stuff i was thinking more display but you're than thinking I was. foresight and right. see like it's just not i'm doing it wasn't me you but airbrush i got an airbrush you're thinking about the whole that's the whole collective yeah. i know it. that this this yep. and this i'll stand out this way so i cheated no <laughs> but no wait but no and that's that's yeah. a testament to no ego 
Yes. It'll stand out, yep. but it'll make the display stronger as a group. Correct. And that becomes yep. the big question. It was of, more of a collab- for it's a collaborative Marriott, effort. Yeah, it was yeah. more you know? for the display than it was yeah. anything to like, hey, How I'm was gonna do the joke. Actually, you really just waited until you saw everybody else's and you went, yeah, I, what, I've seen three what of them, colors so, are gonna yeah. scream yeah. Exactly. more and make yeah. me. Yeah. So, so I yellow cheated, there. I cheated You totally cheated. I did, how, how I was, uh, I day. How was painting that huge ass uh, thing for the Sherman Williams with the grind. Indian Larry? Um, it was really, it was a really unique and cool experience. Um, I painted mine simultaneously with Buck Wild. Uh-huh. So, we, we basically had, you know, over the course of, I flew in on a Wednesday night, left on a Saturday. Okay, morning so he got there about the same time and we basically had two and a half days where it was just us grinding away mm-hmm. and again it's like my process is conducive to leaving myself to, to be able to get out of it in a million different facets yeah. while it still looks polished so there's a lot of function to you yeah. know and there's a, there's a lot of thought into what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and you know the that was originally supposed to be in color I knew like five hours in I'm going there's no way there's going to be able to be color yeah. in this and it became a question of what details to leave out. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it was fine tuning along and knowing what and how people see. So if I were to go at that and go, I need to make this Indian Larry picture look exactly like a photograph, I would have. I did you know coming in? What? I wanted to ask him that. What, Indian Larry? That yeah, I was doing did Indian you, Larry? Did you pick, like, that us was, artists, you know, you're like, no, I picked that image. on your helmet, you're like, I had it down to, I had it down to like, two what images. What image am I going to get and I yeah. want to put on my helmet or whatever? Yes. I so had, you were, uh, yeah, you I had it down in. to, yeah, I had, that was down to two images coming in. Okay. And it was a, like a last minute decision. Because I was curious about that. Yeah, like, yeah that what, was it. And yeah. it was, because um, it's such a. What was the other one that you were thinking? It was, uh, what's, it was another, it was an actor. Um, real famous uh, I can't Marlon Brando when he was oh, okay you just it was, I was thinking more iconic yep. and I was thinking it was going to be a Something, big panel display yeah. I, I wanted it to have some but that's your style though like if you I look, needed something yeah. I needed something that fit but I mm-hmm. knew that the general audience member have they, they have this generic idea of what something should be what mm-hmm. a biker should be Marlon Brando to me is an American icon yeah mm-hmm. it, and it was an iconic mm-hmm. movie and that's yeah. this and I'm thinking audience more or less yeah. and something that I might be able to get through mm-hmm. um, but then the Indian Larry picture I had just done the Michael Lichter yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. show and I'm looking through his photos and I'm like oh god it's like there's a reason why he is who he is and you know he had this one picture and I'm like that that that's the quintessential not only what people think of but that dude among his peers yeah had the same reverence you know and it was just like that's that's it if I could do it justice it gives me a chills because you think just, of Indian yeah. Larry yeah that. and you on know, the it bike was, hair in the wind and go yeah you know everybody thinks you know the stand up and the stunt thing but that's no but it Indian was Indian Larry got on his bike you know and just rode. went that yeah. was it and you it, know it, and there was a spirit there yeah. and I think that so many people whether you bike or not it. can identify with that and again, it went down to what what was my audience? What was the purpose behind it? What was the motive behind time it? Frame too. Time frame, you know, and that and that was it. And then like mm-hmm. Buck and I paint there. We you know just lots of conversations and it just legends never die. That yeah. was a conversation that we had probably in the the eleventh hour of two days of no sleep. <laughs> so you know his has the same the same yep. moniker on his banner. I threw mine in the corner. And that dictated the Peter Fonda thing for me. Yep. Yeah. You know, so easy brought, rider. So. He's not a biker, but man, it was a quintessential biker flick that brought a certain lifestyle to a mainstream mm-hmm. audience, much yeah. in the way the Endless Summer did for yep. some, you know, for surfing. Yep. So that would identify with a SEMA audience. It'd be like, oh yeah. And he just, you know. And he passed. What you, yeah. And he passed, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but it creates a conversation. See, that's and what that's I what like you want. His work that's what you want people process. to have is a conversation. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's what a lot of us artists need to do. You know, it's not a skull with flames. It's not something easy it's I've had three people come up to me that have first hand stories of Peter Fonda guy rode with him to Sturgis another guy hung out with him ran cool. into him in a restaurant mm-hmm. now all of a sudden yeah. we're talking about this and we're saying it creates a conversation yeah. it's a vehicle for something larger that's what good art does well yeah. that's what when you I know? did my helmet my first helmet the first Simpson I ever did and I put it was just me and my buddy in my garage drinking beer acting a fool mm-hmm we did two helmets at the time and I did Samuel Jackson on it I and I just dude it thought, was so good it was such one. a good helmet and yes. you know what works out what worked out well is it when we ride places I always hang my helmet on my handlebars and when you hang it it's just 
you're walking by and Samuel Jackson's face. looking at Staring you like, at you. say what again? <laughs> <laughs> and so it, it created like it's yours. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it created a, uh, like the way I like to do a theme helmet yeah. is like one or two items from the, the theme of what it is. And the rest is just the paint job. You know what I mean? Sure. That way, my theme helmet for Vegas isn't fucking every other theme helmet from Vegas. It might be just one thing from Vegas. Maybe it's the Vegas sign. Sure. And a couple colors that match it, not a full fucking mural of, you know what I mean? But there's, mm-hmm. but that to me, there's your answer to yeah. how can Darren leave such a big negative space on a motorcycle? And yeah. you just nailed it right there. It's you saw what was important to leave out. Yeah. You didn't want to overdo it. You didn't want to overkill it. It's mm-hmm. the same exact thought right there. That's yeah. Hard. That to me, you take a second and think about it. You said, this is going to look like everybody's shit. This is going to be way too much. It's going to be too loud. So I'm going to I'm going to reel back in yeah. a little bit. I'm going to put just enough. There's your answer. You do did, that a little yeah. bit more, it leaves a little bit more space. But you already have yeah. the the insight and the intel to make those big aesthetic decisions. Yeah, yeah. So, so fuck that, what you said earlier. Yeah, you already have the answer. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> 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 Stop doubting yourself, yeah, man. Yeah. Like you, you have it. The like, other thing that I like to do whenever I paint bikes or helmets is always, I can envision how how it will look when you're riding and in the sides and yeah. when you the, all the different angles of looking at something is 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 something I like to pride myself in in uh, in working with flow on mm-hmm. whether it's a helmet or a bike like when you're riding it how does it look when it's sitting on a kickstand how does it look you know and I used to just sit in my shop in a little roll around chair and just roll around the bike all the time and just catching it you know just Lay looking out. yeah just laying it out then I go to the paper and pen and then I, you know what I mean and that yeah. part that process is fun man it really is <laughs> okay, especially dude. when you fucking nail it you know what I mean yep and it was a lot easier on, on big baggers back in the day because they have so much canvas mm-hmm. and you can you can draw lines to things that, you know you can you can do the tank and see Mold how it, it comes the, around yeah. and, yep. and how the tank how does that top of the tank that you can see from this three quarter view fit with this, this corner of the bag and rear fender? Like all this shit is stuff that. And I think he has a unique style. Oh, for sure. Like, yeah, for like sure. you have an, a unique style. Like I know. Every, I know when you're yeah. paint jobs. I know when you're paint jobs in a heartbeat. Yeah. Well, you know, I've been telling that's, everyone, and man. not many people can say that. Like yeah. that's, you know, I think we sit here and we, we talk about this and that. Yeah. Like, that's, like Steve's got a style. Yeah. I can tell unique, your helmet you know? or your paint job. Yeah. From, at a bike show. So, yeah. you know, for me, like, I I was really uh, reluctant to go the panel route because I just, I didn't really have a lot of respect for it. Not not respect for the culture of it, but mm-hmm. respect for the, you know, I thought that it was too easy of a, of a style of paint job to exploit. And it just mm-hmm. blew up out of the last 10 years or mm-hmm. so. Right. So when I finally started doing it, I found a way to complicate it for myself to make me feel like I was doing something different than just paneling out every fucking shape. I started looking for different shapes within something. But then whenever Poland came on the deal and he really introduced me to the style of race helmets Mm -hmm. and I love the shit out of it. Mm -hmm. But there's so many people, you know, not so many people doing it, but it's a style that's very mastered by a lot of badass helmet painters. Yep. So I wanted to take a couple things out of that and Mm -hmm. throw it on these panels to create something I guess it's mm-hmm. mine or whatever sure. and that's kind of where I've found my little niche or whatever but now I'm, at, I'm bored with it now so I'm trying to look for the something else to throw into it to give it a but new flavor but it's nice though that you're looking you yeah. know I think yeah. two people get complacent yeah. but no it's all good but yeah I was trying to figure out how to not make it gay and everything like that but did you succeed? I, well I haven't tried it yet yeah. you know but you know I've seen some people coming in and bringing in like some some uh, what do you call it uh, like some They'll do the panels, but then they'll bring in the panel like some old '90s style thing, like some some fucking checkerboard or mm-hmm. some like splash from stuff. And it's yeah. just like blending these styles is starting to be fun. Mm-hmm. It's 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 taking the 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 totally rad from the '80s and and finding that Your color scheme and turning so it into right this. Now. Still, it's Dude. not going away again. No, it's like the <laughs> no, fucking it comes stain. Back, it does. Well, the, you I know what? I black. haven't seen it yet. And I know it's here. <laughs> <laughs> that tank flat. that Kyle did, the the execute, he did that tank with the the all flaked out, but it has like the arrows, like oh the PP, uh, he's a, dude, it's that a PPG tank, booth, the PPG, uh, no PPG's all PPG the, one. yeah, it's all graffiti. the graffiti booth, graffiti. Yeah. yeah, got that all the arrows and tank, shit. When he posted, I was like, damn, that's dope because it was a perfect blend of like a panel style and then like these bright pop colors. Dude, it's all the fucking yep. neons back, man. It it's, is, but I thought it was gonna go away by now. It's not. <laughs> I brought it back too. <laughs> Fuck, a little man. Bit. I had to. 
Dude, I, I made my little brother get out of my car once for wearing a pink shirt. <laughs> <laughs> he got in the car and he got in with a pink shirt and I said, get but the you, fuck you, out of my you car. You look at Poland's designs in. too, though. Like, you, it works. He's those colors in I there. Mean, that he's I, I think he yeah. can get away with it a little bit more too. And I talked to Austin about this is, is with the racing stuff. You know? Comes you, with his turf a bit. Comes yeah, with that. Especially, that, yeah. That, 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 that style. Style. It's got that the, Formula One. You know, some bikers will, will have a problem with yellow and, and you know, one thing Green, that, like, that, one thing for me, like, I feel like purple goes with every color scheme, mm -hmm. like a little purple pinstripe and everything. Mm -hmm. And so, sometimes I have to get permission from the customers, like, hey man, because some dudes are super homophobic about colors. <laughs> yeah, and they are, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, agreed. Like, oh man, I can't have that color yeah. in it. I'm like, dude, it just works. I'm sorry, like, it just works. You gotta get it in there. But sometimes like the pinstripe color, those nice little colors you bring into it, like what Poland does, mm -hmm. is like, you, it makes you sit back and go, fuck man, I never would have saw that, but now that I'm looking mm -hmm. at it, it's just like, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. And I can't unsee that shit, you know what I mean? Oh, I know, that's <laughs> why I love how Pete does it. You yeah, know, like Pete, you look at, he yeah. brings like a, dude, he the does orange study. color into like, and then he drops like cream on green. Yeah. Or like, and you're like, dude. Like I told him that, I said, that's one of my favorite parts about it is your, I don't want to say outside the box, but you have that style that you're like, you know, all the colors work well. Yeah. And they're so bright and bold. Yeah, and it's and the combinations. You're going, fuck, man, I just wouldn't have put that together. You know, now, and like, he did those, what do they call that, um, speed uh, checkers or whatever. Now everybody's yeah. kind of doing the speed yeah. checkers. And, and I'm like, you influence so many people to, to, to do that. That, that what is it, like a, is like a speed, speed checker speed or something? Speed or? checkers is good. Right? It, it looks it. like it's going. Flag? Well, it looks no, fast. No, no, it looks blurred. It's blurred it looks, out. It looks like there's a speed blur to it. Oh, Pete first so started like that. that. I yeah. think Van Shoes has it like that, where some of the checkers yeah. on the shoes are kind of kind of blurred out a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that's cool. That I have to see that. I haven't seen him do that yet. Oh, speed dude, you've seen it, right? Yeah, I dude, I remember Rob Churchill teaching one of the helmet classes years ago at Airbrush Action, and speed checkers was one of his things. I remember seeing him do that. Mm -hmm. I, I, speed oh, checkers, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so it's like it's a little bit faded. It's like a blur. Yeah, it almost looks like you yeah. know if, if um, you stuck Buck a camera does up. that sometimes on yeah. some of his shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's cool. there's so many like, but there there's enough tricks and there's enough things out there that when you start throwing them in in like what's current styles, then you you evolve into a new style. Yeah, or you create a new style. Maybe it's just the colors. Maybe it's using those those. But I think that that's it. Sometimes it's like I I feel like it's taking something that's commonplace and putting just enough tweak on it where everybody goes, "Holy shit!" Yep. Like skulls are. I feel like like I started making a splash when I started like taking my own skulls, setting up my still like photographing my own shit, yeah. compositing mm -hmm. it in Photoshop, mm -hmm. and putting a twist on just the skull on a tank. And I remember that being the first like like one of the first like social media posts I put yeah, out I there that, that got a response from like people that I'd been looking up but to for taking, a while. But you're taking I'm taking the time something that's stale yep. and putting it I yep. think that well, instead of going like, on the like internet, the skull with the uh, with the army hat on it in the in the yes. lease. That's that, that dude that, that was, was where there's oh, a was, typical two o'clock in the morning, day after day after day, and that was real skull our army, oh. you know, army helmet in my backyard in the leaves in fall and photographed it over and over and, and over again the and yeah. painted the hell out of it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I remember Corey St. Clair saying to me, he's like, dude, I never thought dead leaves could be cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but it changed the conversation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's also pushing Well, it was cool because you did, you know, because most of us look at, I'm going to do a skull and then like, it's just boring. And no, but there's a story there. There's a narrative going on there yeah. now all of a sudden. It's mm -hmm. not just cool. It's what the fuck happened yeah. here, mm -hmm. you know? And so I like that more and that's kind of like every time they ask me to airbrush here i never prepare for it pre prepare for it sorry mm -hmm. and um i'm like fuck it, i'll do a skull and then i'm sitting here doing a skull and you're doing fucking last time i was here you were doing goddamn uh the dude and stuff i'm like fuck man like i even brought some fucking walter white pit or not walter white but uh walter dobeck right is his name in the fucking movie in uh in the big lebowski uh yeah yeah I think walter, walter the dude uh, walter, but yeah well yeah I, think I know who you're talking about. I don't know about, what his yeah, last yes. name is, but whatever, the character he played, I yes. was going to do that. I was like, man, like, I just... That would have been cool. I, I, I just bitched up, man. I didn't really like the setting. Okay. And I don't remember what we were using over there in House of Color Booth, but I don't know. I just bitched up. What it boiled down to. I did a skull, didn't even finish it. <laughs> Everybody was like, as soon as you started airbrushing, because they're only giving you an hour that year, yep. it's like someone standing oh, behind me that. ready to yeah. do something. I was like... But, like, that's a challenge to me. Like, And yeah. I feel like when I... You know, I remember. I've been coming to yeah. SEMA that like super long, but like to me, everything is an opportunity. Yeah. And where I saw, you know, and I know it's networking and this and that, but I remember the first year I came to SEMA, I and I got into the house of color booth. I had one hour a day slot. I was like lucky to get it, but I remember going, "This is an opportunity." And then I just watched and I watched and I realized. 
people were partying too much, people weren't showing up for their shifts. That first year, I painted almost four hours a day at House of Color when I was only slotted for one. Mm-hmm. And, it, and to me, everything's a job a job interview, still to this day. Like, yeah. I'm not it's coming here to, to paint it. a skull, I'm coming here to prove a point. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I will continue to do so. Mm-hmm. And I know that has not made me some friends, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. That, But that's my fucking work ethic, that's my drive. Mm-hmm. And everybody bitches about not getting paid, about things being the same, but they continue to do the same thing. That's True. the definition of insanity, as they say. Yeah. Yep. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna fucking throw down the way I throw down, Mm-hmm. Elevate or don't. Like I'm not. So you're, I'm not you're, slowing you're changing down. it by doing it. I, it's called work ethic, mm-hmm. man. It's mm-hmm. called discipline. It's called working as hard as you know the Depression era generation. Yep. Those World War Two guys, man. Yep. Like they fucking threw down hard every yeah. day. It's I know just <clears> just <throat> it's having, blue, it's having a blue collar work ethic yeah, and having nothing that, less than that. that you know, to work with them, it just. You know, for you, you, you. Well, drive, that was a privilege, man. You're driving like, you, people. The people yeah. that see that though will actually pick it up and go, dude. He's he's like you've seen it. Yeah. You see it. He's at this booth. He's at that booth. That's drive. That yeah. that will hopefully inspire you to but go you, home you, and fucking. You need gas. that. You need that more than talent. Yeah. For that's sure. what yeah. people notice. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you you. I think a lot of us do like you just mentioned. Come here and think of this as like, oh, we're on vacation. And you're like, no, this is work Dude, in Vegas. Yeah, this is this is time to make this is this is time to put your foot down and make your mark. Yeah, like true. this is well, where all the best people the in the world are here for one week. Yep. And you're gonna just show up, paint something cheesy, and hope to go get drunk with some famous dude. Yeah. Fuck off, man. I'm gonna be at the booth doing your shift while you're fucking out there yep. till two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yep. Love me or hate me, you know, yeah. it's 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 working out pretty well for me thinking that way. Yeah. yeah. You know, and when I go home, I can guarantee you Sunday. I'm gonna put my kids to bed and I'm probably gonna be airbrushing that night. Yeah. Like, it's just, that's the difference. There's no break in this. Like, mm-hmm. that's the drive you need for success. And I enjoy it. Like, mm-hmm. I enjoy that because I know somewhere in this world, somebody's working harder than me. Yeah. I don't want to, I, I don't want that, you, you know, I wanna be that works. guy. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's good. Talent or not, you know, but that's, that's, that's a work ethic. I mean, what's it take? That, that's, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, for sure, man. <laughs> like, well, fuck. I know you guys got to probably get back, so let's wrap it up and cool. you know tell what's how do they find you on all your all your areas and shit. I am on Instagram at airoilandlead.com. Mm-hmm. Um, same on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can email me Steve at airoilandlead.com. Nice. Um, what about you, buddy? At Paint Zoo on Instagram and what's that name from? Well, <laughs> that's a fun story, dude. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> we got a we got so, minutes for that we one. Got yeah. Minutes. Well, I uh, I paint. Uh huh. My life's a zoo. Okay. It's just easy to remember. <laughs> and and I just kind of just had that for a long time. And, and uh, when websites were kind of going on, yeah. it's such a short thing to remember because, mm-hmm. you know, we're all painters. Yeah. And, you know, if you look at any of our lives, it's a fucking zoo yeah. pretty much. Like, you know, you're, you're got to go to take your kids here. You're doing this. And I got 50 things to paint. <laughs> and it's a zoo so yeah. I just kind of kind of marketed it that way but you know that works yeah Super it is catchy. good at, yeah paint I mean zoo. that's, how I, that's yeah. how I found you paint zoo I remember like early days of the internet doing google for airbrush people around yeah paint, paint zoo, zoo. <laughs> yeah I'm going, oh my god who is this dude yeah I just I don't know it's it's just nice to have people close to you that you can kind of bounce Yo, ideas yeah, yeah, off we kind of keep in contact yeah, like sometimes sure, you're in your world so much that you don't get to like you know you're busy I'm busy and then you're like Hey Steve, how's everything going? Yeah, it's and just how's a check life? in. Yeah, you all right? Check in. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Just and knowing that that's it. Like you yeah, share that working on a cool project. Cool. It's I've, I've been doing it, dude. Doing this podcast for the last two years, and all the people I've met doing it, and you know, I've been making myself whenever I'm bored. Like you know, when you're fucking like, there's nothing on the internet right now. Yep. You know, but I can't do anything else. I've been going through my phone and haven't said hey to this dude in a while. It's and I neat, messaging. isn't it? What a mm-hmm. unique yeah. world. Yeah, it really, it we do really that, is, man. You know, we, it's not like, hey, we're, like, we're catching up at SEMA. Yeah. You gotta catch up more. Like, yeah. hey, how's family? Yeah. How's it go? I used to hit you up all the time. Remember, like, hey, how's everything going? And you started a podcast and like, people get busy. I get yep. it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, when all this pain shit's out of the way, we, we're all friends. Right. You know what True. I mean? Like, fuck all this. Yeah. Like, yep. we should be friends. You know, you're, 
kick-ass painter he's a kick-ass painter and we bounce ideas off each other yeah. and we're not afraid of each other's techniques yeah. or, or I mean, learning i hit you up whenever i was yeah, painting that sure. portrait for my my grandfather yeah. and it yep. was uh just trying to find a new way to tackle it because it was a such there's so much detail in in his face mm -hmm. and, and it's important I wanted to, you. to nail it yeah I was yeah. really yeah but yeah. how how great is it to have someone like him to go hey I'll show you. Yeah. And yeah, that's you know. really why we need to all Yeah, for stick sure. I mean ultimately we are, you know, we're we're I mean competition isn't I mean friendly competition, good competition drives shit forward, yeah. but you gotta get each other's mm -hmm. backs all along the way too. I see so. shit that he's I'm like, get the you know <laughs> but really i mean you know we share such a unique kind of existence mm -hmm. in what we do you know yeah. like i know my social surroundings back home don't understand my life at all yeah. but when i come out here i see a bunch of people who mm -hmm. are in the same boat from you know sometimes all around the world yep. yeah and that's you know there's there's family there there's community yep. there that is it's mm -hmm. rad to embrace that and again mm -hmm. it's you know i'm We're all the same to boat. sit here you know having this conversation with yeah, you guys absolutely you know yeah. it's neat yeah. it's cool it's definitely cool you're doing Honored everybody a service your, man uh, for sure podcast, without man. a doubt <laughs> all right guys i appreciate it and uh y'all need to get back to work back to so. the grind man yep all for right. sure thanks chase there you have it some badasses right there talking some badass stuff anyway check it out Go follow them. Check all their stuff out. They're really amazing artists. Maybe those those are the guys that you need to get to do your work. You know, maybe that's the they have the look and the style that that's gonna you know fit what you can what you envision for your custom paint job or helmet or whatever you're into. You know what I mean? Also, I want to thank you guys for checking this out and also our sponsors, Simpson Motorcycle Helmets on Instagram and SimpsonMotorcycleHelmets.com, Dream Rides John on Instagram and TeamDreamRides.com. Fast Life at checkout for ten percent off. Big Bear Choppers on Instagram and BigBearPerformance.com. Paint Huffer Metal Flake and PaintHuffer.com. Fast Life 12 at checkout for 10% off. Thundermax EFI on Instagram and ShopTMax.com. And Lex and Moto on Instagram and LexandMotorcycle.com. Fast Life at checkout for 15% off. Whew. Thank you, sponsors, man. You guys check them out. They're the ones that uh, have cool shit that I know you're going to want to use. I use all of it and uh, have used the people in the past in the, the shops. You know what I mean? So check them all out. This month, uh, December, we got we got some good ones for you. This week coming up Thursday, we have Taylor Schultz. We had a good conversation. Uh, you know, Jesse was in there. Uh, changed his uh, Instagram name to Shagwire Russell, um, courtesy of. I think it was my idea, but anyway, you know, I'll take credit for that a little bit. But anyway, we got him coming on. Uh, I just confirmed with Rick Fairless and his daughter, uh, Lena, who are, you know, some here in Dallas are some uh, legends, basically. So we're going to have them on and, and get a lot of history, and I'm looking forward to that conversation. I think we got my buddy Marshall Tucker coming on. You don't know who he is? Follow him. He's on Instagram. I don't have his Instagram handle on right now, but he's out there in St. Louis, and he's a... He's an energetic motherfucker, so we're going to have him on, too. And uh, got some more coming. And we got a month full of uh, getting this shop done so we can hopefully have this grand... It's not a grand opening. It would be our anniversary. So we started the Fast Life Garage on the fit in 2015 in January. And then we started the Fast Life Podcast in 2018 in January. So in January, we always have our anniversary party, and we try to pair it up with the Dallas IMS show. So... There's more people in town and there's something to do, like an after party. So Saturday, we're looking and hoping to have an after party here at the shop with it just about completed or as much of it done as possible for our anniversary, but during the IMS weekend. So it should be a good time and hopefully hopefully I'll have some more uh, information on all that stuff for you guys over the next couple of weeks. But anyway, fuck it. I'll see you guys on Thursday. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>